Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 500. I'm one. Nope, just 500. It's May 23rd, 2018. I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. And I'm Alan Malventano. We've, yeah. got, we've got Ken and Alex sitting behind, uh, behind the desk. You ever think you were going to make it to 500? Um, Look, you can nope. see Jim's elbow. Ooh, Ooh, do you know that nice Jim elbow. is a handsome man? That's a good elbow. Like when you nice. he's rather stunning. <laughs> he has he has a certain olive cast to his skin. <laughs> he just looks so. He just now looks so. Well, he's like, not listening. What, what would he, he know? Not talking Quan, about Will. You. Not talking about Jim for sure. Uh, I, no, I don't ever think I never like when I started the first episode. Did I think I'd make it to five hundred? No. Do so you think you'd hmm. make it to five? I didn't think yeah. you, Lee, and I would <laughs> okay. make it to five. I mean, I was pretty you know, confident. Around number 33, when you added me in, you thought it was going to go just downhill quickly from there. And it did. A flaming right. meteor of Thinking about despair. it, you know, it's 500, but we, we didn't count some episodes. Like the CES podcasts that we did were sometimes three or four a week during CES. I mean, those were the only ones we didn't count. Those weren't counted. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Probably not. So. But you know, that's, marathon that's, count? that's probably another. No, I guess the twelve-hour stream didn't. Yeah, count. but it's that's probably, probably talking podcast. twenty, maybe thirty max episodes that you know things that were recorded that weren't included, right? Because some CESs we didn't do any and all that. But yeah. anyway, we'll get to the five hundred whatever BS here in a little bit. <laughs> um, we are still recording live. We do that on Wednesday nights, seven p.m. Pacific, ten p.m. Eastern at pcpercom slash live. You can see our live. You know stream. what? I'm, I'm, I'm extremely chat. happy. I hate to interrupt like this. No, you don't. No, you don't. You I'm don't so hate happy it. that we do not record dead. 500 episodes for that joke. Uh, There's nothing special about this 500 podcast, apparently. You're right. Not at all. This, this, you are correct. There's literally Harry. nothing special about this episode, which may be disappointing to many. Um, PCPer.com no, slash live. If you uh, want a reminder for that, you can go to PCPer.com slash subscribe. You get this page here. Uh, that asks for your name and your email address. We send you an email that says, hey, we're going to do a thing. Please come to this website. We also have our Patreon campaign running. That is at patreon.com slash PC per. This is your place to become a regular, recurring, monthly contributor to us, helping pay for things like video editing and people to be here and articles and stuff. Uh and we greatly appreciate each and every person that is, a, that is a patron, as is always the case. If you become a new patron uh, or increase your patronage during the show, I will read off your name on the, on the show as well. So you'll be included in, in, uh, in, this video for, or in this video and audio forever, which I think for the 500th episode is like a special treat. right? Mm -hmm. Think of how many people will go back in time 10 years in the future when we're on episode 1,000 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're like, God, I, I wonder what was happening back – in the past, and they'll just pick a number like five hundred, and that's what they'll come up with. How far can they go? Do back you right honest now? to God think that someone is going to do that? Um, I, I, yes, because I, I, we have had people on the show ask us why we our podcast feed only goes back to like seven. I think no, it, it's it's like thirty. Yeah, I want to say like I think Josh actually. It's like when Josh came on almost. I, that's, those are the episodes <laughs> I really wanted to save. Yeah. Uh, I think I found back to like episode seven on some old hard drives and stuff, yeah. but never back to episode one. Those were bad. You really don't want to listen to them. But anyway, patreon.com slash PC per. And uh, we thank each and every person that uh, that helps us out in that way. And uh, if you become a new patron on episode 500, then you're an extra special contributor. That's hey, think about true, this. But... Think that seriously interrupting. Yeah. But no, we wasn't know. like we the get first it. hundred bi weekly. Not the first hundred. No, I think we started out every week and then we reverted to bi weekly. Because yeah, when I was first on, it was it was bi weekly and you would often call me. So are you gonna join the podcast? And I was like, Oh well I'm very, very shit faced, but sure, go ahead. <laughs> I mean it did start five minutes ago, so <laughs> Yeah. It it was weekly by the time I came around and the first podcast I posted was seventy seven, it looks like. Really, you were pre one hundred. Yeah, I am curious uh, if anybody can find the date for like the first couple of episodes. Has it, I think it's been more than ten years. If there was, uh, if there was any yeah. length of time where we were bi weekly, well, podcast seventy seven was on October eighth, two thousand nine. So it has to be. Yeah. More than 10 years. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there you go. 
Uh, we also have our mail bags. There's a couple of them this week. There's a uh, one episode number 43. It looks like this making poor decisions with Josh Walrath, which is <laughs> yeah. a constant theme of this website in reality. Uh, and then we have this episode, which is just plain old me. Uh, no, no fancy subtitle on that one. Un- but brother, are people walking in the background? Yes. Normally. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure Ken walks by here at some point. Mm, oh, wait, what's that? Certainly not going to work. Ken. It's not important. Oh. Well, it's, it's all important. <laughs> but, it, but it really is. <laughs> now you're committed. Nah, no, nah, I'm not going to fight it. Um, and what else we have? Oh, we have our merch store. What better way to celebrate 500 episodes than buying a Josh Tech t-shirt at joshtech.com. J-O-S-H-T-E-K-K. Uh, get you this I, website here. I still want to get one of those canvas prints. You I'm need going one. to get one. You need a, you need a canvas print. Uh, you can get a mug. And you can get a t-shirt, which I can't, I don't know why I can't, I'll just click on it and we'll do it that way. So yeah, there you buddy. go. Don't worry, delivery before Father's Day was standard shipping. So this is the perfect Ooh. gift to get for your dad, who's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> shut up, dad. And then shut up, I mean, dad. he's got early it. onset dementia, so it will really confuse him. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man, that's good stuff. A little that's, that's your son, but, Josh. You know. Didn't you know? Um, gained a little weight. Yeah, well, you know, it happens. Uh, and obviously, we wants? still have our PC purse shirt. We have our Death Wish Raid shirt. All of those goodies can be found at joshtech.com, and we appreciate everybody who uh, buys stuff from there. And then uh, what else we got on here? Oh, yeah, we still got our, our EVGA May giveaway going where we're giving away uh, some cases, some motherboards, some keyboards, some coolers, some power supplies. I believe it's, uh, what do I say here, $2,200, over $2,200 worth of hardware uh, being given away. That is on the front page of the website right now. Just go to PCPer.com. Lots of ways to enter from subscribing to uh, the PC per, the subscribing to the PC per podcast, signing up for the mailing lists, following us on Twitter, following EVG on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then there is one here that's important. This is the one entry per day bonus entry. All you have to do is come back and click this button once a day. Because everybody wants entry. the bonus the button, entry. Feel better. And don't forget. We don't have audio hooked up to it's your laptop. It's always, but that's why they have subtitles there. It's going to be May. It's fine. All right. So uh, before we get into the first story, we are going to quickly reminisce about how awesome having 500 episodes is. I think we did this a little bit already. Um, but I, I asked on Twitter, and this is always dangerous. I asked on Twitter, uh, what have you learned? What do you like most? What do you wish would come back? Who's the best looking? Any comments that you could come up with about uh, about the 500th episode? And we had some good some 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 good comments here. Peter J. Cavan commented that 10 nanometers hard. That's true. Cheap graphics cards are good, but probably Josh is the best looking. So it's, that's this is probably. an inaccurate statement. He's biased. So uh, biased. This, this is probably the best thing that exists. Um, <laughs> this collection of photos from Anthony, these photoshops. This might be my favorite. <laughs> Alan's yeah. face is clearly distorted it's it doesn't really no that's just how he looks yeah Seb- exactly. sebastian looks like putin in i this. think i think i look damn good in this in this <laughs> for for speaking, i'll give you that i mean this is probably still the best uh <laughs> cnn reskin where ryan would totally sell out for one billion dollars probably even less ssd still not 10 cents a gig ssd is still not 10 cents a gig yeah popular as fidget spinners um there is uh, this, the man award winner. Uh, we still haven't used that for something. For <laughs> runner up. <laughs> There's another me uh, as Han Solo here, which is yeah, which yeah, is yeah. good. Uh, Josh is Obi Wan here, which I feel is factually inaccurate. Did the Brian Maltavino picture make it so? I didn't see that one in here. This is also pretty good. But at I'm least also, I'm Julia Roberts in this one. Ken, Ken's Photoshop looks pretty good in yeah, that, in yeah, that yeah. one. I'd, I'd use that as my Twitter thing if I were you. There's <laughs> <laughs> my eyes with they the look sunglasses. Terrible. That's pretty good. Uh, oh God! Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> and then there's another one. Uh, I don't remember this one. It must have been on an episode I wasn't on or something, maybe. I don't no, know. I think you're around. I just I, wasn't I Scroll uh, down just a little bit more. The first comment's pretty good. Yeah, so this is <laughs> <laughs> from somebody who found this, <laughs> just, like, stumbles this upon. story for no reason. <laughs> like, what is you this? Know, I, yeah. I, my favorite was always the, the, the I'm the bishop. 
Yeah. You guys are priests yeah. and altar boys. Sebastian is an altar boy. Is yeah, that's pretty that's epic. good. This yeah, is a, a good was. comment from Lucas says, listener since 2012, the podcast has introduced me to whiskey, processor fabrication, SETI at home, electronics basics, and overall motivated me to pursue an education in comp sci with a focus in software engineering. Hashtag I'm watching <clears throat> us. Hashtag mineral oil intern. What's the lobsters and magnets? It's the lobster sticks to magnets song. We've we've talked about that extensively. Uh, I don't remember, remember that anything one. about that. Yeah, lobster sticks to magnet. You, you've ne- we have talked about it. I believe you. You guys are all getting huh? old. I might have inadvertently taught that guy something about soldering. In the past. Uh, Eric says he uh, got into PC Pro after hearing me on Twitch, the show I do on the Twit Network, and he loves it because it feels less supervised. <laughs> supervised. <laughs> the other show, which basically just means the other show doesn't have Josh. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. not there to ruin everything. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, apparently uh, this uh, chip here. I did. I po- I posted an ad. I did like an ad spot on my brother and my brother and me. When a, I, I remember that, I was br- like, why in the hell is he advertising I, with those guys? And we play a little bit, and it's like uh, what uh, p- pussy control. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They yeah. played a song of, uh, and then yeah. they thought it was a drug related thing, and it was funny, right? And I was, I wasn't doing it to really get new readers or listeners. It was more like I like these guys, want to support their podcast. And now, of course, they're an enormous thing. They have a TV show, and they, you know, Jimmy Buffett invites them to shows and stuff. So clearly, that's all because of the ad that I was able, clearly. I was able to run. Clearly, we're the successful ones. Yeah. 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 Terry says he learned to build computers here. Discovered us during his college time. Um, it's 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 good to read things like this, you know, that, that we exist, that people listen. I could listen to Alan talk about storage These for hours. These are all just Russian bots. <laughs> These are, yeah, yeah, they're all Russian bots. <laughs> it loves the uh, the Sebastian appearances. So someone found the archive.org listing for podcast 001. Yeah. I think we should put that in the RSS feed along with this one. Okay. Tomorrow. Right. I think we should just play it we and should, sit back and listen. We should relist podcasts. Oof. I don't know. You might want to does see it, that. Does one it actually first. work? Does the podcast yeah. link work? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It what does. Was the date on it? Uh, yeah, that's a good. I haven't good listened to it because a, somebody, somebody in the chat, tell me what the date of episode one is. Is it two thousand and six? It's two thousand eight, November twentieth, oh. is what it says. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's no, the archive that org crawl uh, it. That's the archive, though. And that can't be right. Yeah, if you listen to the audio, if the audio is actually there, surely I. Uh, very quietly enunciate completely the date. <laughs> uh, you, oh, you got to listen to this, Ryan. You won't even recognize with yourself. Some, with some copyright music at the beginning so of it. Welcome to the Jungle in the first one? I, I did Welcome to the Jungle early, but I picked yeah. a different song every week. Yeah. Right? I picked some different MP3 as the lead in yeah. to it, which seemed great at the time. Can you even put episode number one in the RSS based on that? Uh, I mean, I mean we nobody have to de- I mean, whatever. <laughs> We'll just have to. What are they going to just do? link it straight yeah. to archive.org? <laughs> <laughs> that won't work. Now we'll throw up an S3 and then just archive.org almost never works reliably anyway. Uh, so, no. yeah. you know. Yet somehow they have episode one. Um, but 500 episodes is a long time, and we, we thank people who listen for whatever reason it might be. Uh, and we, I don't know, I don't know what else to say. Anybody else have any comments on it? I mean, it's been. A super damn long time. I told my wife tonight. It's like mm-hmm. I came home for dinner and I said, "Yeah, I gotta go." I said, "I'm really tired. I gotta go back to the the show and do the podcast." She's like, "Okay." I was like, "It's episode 500," and she kind of stopped. She was like, "Really?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, this is 500th one of these I've done, or some close proximity because I've missed many." You've but... worked late for 500 nights. <laughs> it's 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 a. Uh... Yeah, and you remember I used to do Twitch on late nights as well. On Thursdays, like it was yeah. nine p.m. on Thursdays. Mm-hmm. So for almost ten years straight, every Wednesday night, here we are doing this. Yeah, I know. Um, doing this, doing this thing. Who do you think's missed the fewest? Missed the fewest? Yeah, probably Jeremy. Yeah, uh, probably enough. Enough. Probably right on bi yearly ice fishing vacations. Yeah, yeah, that's that true. But, but he was around earlier than I was. I mean, up until a few years ago, I would you say you will hear me, my voice but... on that episode one. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, Jeremy's been yeah. in most of them. Yeah, if, if we count the the total, it's probably Jeremy. He if we might count have, up to the m- most he, it could have been, he might have been in more of them than you. It's very possible. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. that, that's that's yeah. not that's not a maybe. That's a definitely. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I, I think. 
Jeremy's yeah. the podcast host now. Like, yeah, yeah. Jeremy's yeah. Jeremy's just it now. Uh, before Sorry, we man. move on to our first story and stop being sappy about stuff, uh, we have patrons patrons to thank. Dylan Patel is a new pledge for five dollars. Thank you, Dylan. Greatly appreciate it. Um, I eat urinal cakes for breakfast. <laughs> Just Air edited margin. their pledge from five dollars to ten dollars. <laughs> I mean, they smell nice. I don't know. Uh, I might have been a sale on a like afford more green. minty fresh breath. And Josh Spice just pledged three dollars as a new patron. So thank, <laughs> thank you, Josh Spice. Thank you very much for that. And I have a new GDPR uh, email from Full Screen. So there you go. Delete that. Uh, moving on. So uh, if if you guys have any more funny comments, feel free to interject whenever you wish. Josh never holds back. So why should anybody else? That's yeah. fine. Uh, all right. Stuff happened this week. Actually, we missed last week, too. So stuff yeah, happened yeah. in the last two weeks. We'll run through them in a relatively quick manner, as we always do here. We're very short-winded. Uh, we're not verbose. Mm, What's the no. opposite of that? What's the... Unsupervised? No. Calvin Coolidge we're very is verbose. the opposite of that. I know. I was making... Never mind. Uh, Ken's going to tell us about a caching server. It's as exciting as it you sounds. You mean a caching server? Caching. Yes. Sorry. Jeremy's here. It's you have a caching. To speak appropriate. There's Canadian. Feel my wonder, why don't you? Ken, why would I want to build a Steam cache? Cache. Because you have ridiculous demands and download games from Steam over and over way too often, like us. Yeah. Or you run a land party. You run land party, and it could be a small one. Like yeah. it could be like ten guys. Yeah. Sure. You know, um, the the idea is basically you intercept the traffic that the traffic request that a Steam client makes. Yeah through this caching server mm -hmm. and if the game already exists in the caching server you serve it locally it's faster et cetera, et cetera. right yeah and how you just, you just do a different dns yeah you use a different dns it, it was you, way easier do, than i expected it to be apparently can you just so do like host file the river thing? host file is uh, iffy not quite because the steam content servers kind of change oh, so okay, okay so there are two parts of this essentially there's the sort of dns part of it both of these run in docker containers so completely containerized applications inside a Linux that have a Linux environment inside of them that you can run on Windows or Linux. Linux is more recommended for Docker because development tools on Windows can be kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. Yeah. But essentially you have the DNS container, which is just running a DNS server and it is acting just like a local DNS server. So every request you make is going through it and seeing if it has the local copy of the DNS. Mm -hmm. And if so, it isn't hopping out to the internet DNS server, mm -hmm. but they keep an updated list of all of the CDNs for all the game services. So this goes beyond Steam. You can do Origin, you can do Uplay, you can do Blizzard, Battle.net, you can Ooh. do all of this sorts Windows of stuff. Windows updates. Yeah, Windows updates even. Uh, so if you're trying to access one of those servers, it just redirects it to the IP address of the other Docker container, which is running an HTTP proxy doing what you described earlier, hmm. monitoring okay. the traffic okay. and kind of caching all of the contents that go through it. Got so it. so if it didn't have the thing cached, and say you're doing a LAN party at your place or something, and the first person goes to download that game, yeah, your connection only downloads the game one time. Yeah. Got it. So good for a bandwidth limited situations. Good if you have a couple people over to play PC games in LAN setting, you have a 20 megabit connection, and you all need to download a two gig patch. Yeah. Right. Like, And the other bonus is it's fast. Yeah. So this all started because we had a gigabit. We had, we still have a gigabit connection. We used to be able to download from Steam at 110 megs per second. Mm -hmm. We can no longer do that. We kind of peak at 50, 60. Yep. Sometimes we hit 20, 30 megs per second, and it just annoyed the piss out of me. Yep. And it's and, not our connection's fault. It's just no, no, no. We can download you know. from other places. Well, whatever. We can I'll, hit fast. It's, it's hard. Yeah. It, we can do. We can speed test higher than that if nothing else. You play in particular is actually pretty good at maxing our connection still. Oh yeah, yeah. And, oh, and really? Origin was too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Origin was hitting, you know, 70s, 80s megabytes per second yeah. as well. And also, we're frequently downloading the same game. <laughs> we are. Right? Like, we're, we're testing We've a hand, got about you know, the same, same 10 titles that we use for testing at any given time. Right. Be it notebooks, desktops. Notebooks, you know, we're doing storage testing. Yeah. We're yep. trying to like, oh, well, it's, what happens if we load this level, right? Up, download yeah. that game. And, and we had tried doing things where you download to a... Uh, uh, like we you back save, up the game to a file game. server, yeah. but honestly, the process of transferring that file over and having Steam like validate it, yeah, re-import it, was like 
longer than just re-downloading it. At least it was when we were running at 110 megs per second yeah. on gigabit. Right. And then that went away. And, and so th now this way you always have an up-to-date version cached, whereas you would have to, like, if there's a one gig patch, you would have to re-export the game or you have to download the patch when you installed it. And yeah. Yeah, just the whole backup mechanism doesn't work all that well in Steam. It's not very efficient. If right. that worked just like a normal file transfer, that's what we would do all the time, of course. Sure. That would yeah. make the most sense. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what hardware did we use for this? Uh, so we're actually running this in a Linux VM on the sort of the new Office NAS that we've been experimenting with. This is a QNAP TS-877 based on a full desktop Ryzen 7 1700 CPU. This is a really cool piece of hardware. Yeah. Regardless of this discussion, this is actually a really interesting piece of hardware. What GPU is in that thing currently? There's no GPU in oh, it. Oh, what, what did we have in there at one point? We had a 1080. We had a 1080. Yeah. <laughs> a 1080 fits in there. Yeah, yeah. it's got PCI yeah. expansion. It's got a power supply with additional connections so you can hook up stuff. So what we added to it was a 10 gigabit Ethernet card. Yeah, right. It's so, just hilarious that that so we could literally be your desktop PC <laughs> because really that's what you do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we had the 10 gig NIC in it, and we also added two one terabyte 840 EVOs in a RAID zero configuration. Obviously, we're not really worried about the data integrity of our cache. Like if the, if yeah, the array the crashes, dies, we just it's just a cache. Again, we just download and, yeah. it again. Yeah, so we're going on. for maximum throughput for our 10 gig network. So we have two terabytes of caching capability. Right. A little less than that. It's more like 1.75 or something like that. Yep. With formatting and the OS and everything of Steam cache so that we, in theory, won't really run out. Yeah. We'll never really run anything off the end of the cache for yeah, probably... probably a year or so, I would imagine, if not a little longer. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we're trying to download a whole bunch of different Steam games. It's usually the same set, and it's less than, you know, it's way less than two terabytes worth. So so what were the results? Uh, we got to about a little over 250 megabytes a second through Steam with 10 gig NICs on both sides. This, this capture was a little less, but I think I saw it get above 250 now you have to have fast storage on the download side this right. is going to like a optane p4800x just something that we knew we weren't bottlenecking mm -hmm. would you consider this so again I, I think there's limit the average person doesn't want to do this right if you're uh if, if you, you if, if you live in a house a, and if you're on a bandwidth constrained like you know you're living out on a farm or something yeah but if it's just you yeah, you're but you're if you're just downloading the games to a hard drive and you need or something, to redownload the games. Yeah, like if you, you have, have a super slow connection, it could. If make you have sense. ADSL extended sure, range, sure, but that, is, that means I mean you can either, you can either have that storage locally in your computer or you yeah. could have it in your caching server. Yes, right. So at that point, yeah. you're having you have one copy of it, or whatever. Yeah, just keep true. it locally. That's true. Yeah. Right. I this mean, is, I'm thinking back to college when I lived in that house with a couple of roommates, yeah. and we were all playing PC games. Like, have, this would have been a cool thing to set up. Yeah, four at that guys point. in an apartment. Yep. Um, you know, uh, a fraternity house with 20 people, something like this. You set up, and it suddenly is very useful. Obviously, if you host LAN parties on a semi regular basis, or you know you're going to host a LAN party for 10 or 15 guys, mm -hmm. uh, this is a good idea. If you're going to host a LAN party at you know, this surely like QuakeCon does something like this, right? Uh, surely. Yes. I'm Th sure those guys are trained yes. professionals. Yeah. Yes. On, on a way bigger and better scale. Yeah. Than yeah. 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 But like something to this effect of, well, we don't want people to kill our fiber connection with AT&T by downloading patches or downloading these, these popular but I, games. But, I, so think we, they, but we, I think they would set up like a legit like Steam server. Like one of their, uh, like, I mean, maybe, but you have to have yeah. interactions with yeah. Valve for that. There's not something not you can just Valve do in your once set up Steam server. Yeah, I don't think Valve's going to let you have a server no. locally for that. Because I mean, in, in reality, you probably put whatever the most popular 50 games are, and then you let the rest of them go through. Yeah, or no, you probably just cache it on demand, right? So, yeah. it, it it's a really interesting idea. I don't think it, it's not applicable to everybody. It's not applicable to most people, but, but was it was it, it? But you thought overall it was fairly easy to set up and get going. Yeah, you need to learn a little about a little bit about how docker works and containers work but it's it's it was kind of a fun project to wade into that stuff in general it's yeah. kind of like learning about what modern web technologies and right. stuff like that and that just the, the big part was getting the dns moved over to the internal docker image to do the proper resolution yeah and so we're not actually running all of our DNS through this yet because we kind of want to battle test it. In theory, running all like all of our machines DNS through it would make sense because we'll just get faster DNS requests because we have several less hops out to the internet to hit a DNS server every time mm -hmm. we want to make a request that we don't have cache locally on our machine. However, I, we just haven't really switched it all over yet. 
We're currently setting the DNS manually in the NIC settings of each computer. For the so when computer I go to download a bunch, downloading of, a bunch of I go to download a bunch of data too. on Steam, I change yeah. the DNS server in Windows to our local one to yeah. kind of shuffle everything through that. Right. It's sort of a go-between if you don't want to send all of your DNS to this random sort of VM Docker container situation. Got it. Very cool. Check that out. Uh, it's on the site. Neat idea. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Lee posted a review of the Corsair RMX series, 850 watt power supply. Corsair, well known to to continue to produce high quality units. This this new uh, family is five models, thousand watts down to 550 watts. I feel like Standard they kind of been out for a special while, right? white. Like these RMX. Yeah, like I've, yeah. I bought those like a year yeah. ago, almost. I think. Yeah, I don't know if this is a a just a new if it's a different revision or perhaps just a new capacity that we haven't looked at yet. These, yeah, we I mean, probably just hadn't reviewed the eight fifty. Ten year yet. warranties, eighty plus gold. These aren't like your platinum level power supplies, but this has an MSRP of one hundred fifty nine dollars instead of say three hundred fifty nine yeah. dollars along the way. Fully modular, uh, high end units. I, you know, these are some. This is something that just these power supplies in general. We have a bunch around the office. Yeah, like we all, have, we pretty have much a bunch all of our test beds have these. RM, oh. RMX 1000s? Yeah, is that RMX 1000s. Yeah. Uh, I have several RMX 850s at home. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think we've had a single failure. No. I don't think we have. Like, well, we, we have them all over the place. Eight to and ten of them in this Yeah, office. these were the power yeah. supplies that when I, you know... We got annoyed uh, because we had other call, ones Corsair fail. calls and says, hey, what do you need for yeah. the next couple of months of stuff? I was like, well, we're rebuilding GPU test pads or CPU test pads or whatever. You know, could you send me four or five of these of these units? Yeah. Just so we have them on hand. They go, yeah, sure. And they've been very good, very reliable. Uh, no problems. I, every power supply should be fully modular from this point forward, I kind of believe. Yeah, really. They um, should just all be that way. There doesn't seem to be any detriment to it at this point. Here's the internal pick for for Ken, as we always. Wait, need it to looks have. like uh, scroll up a little bit. Mm. It looks like two hands holding above Corsair right here. Aww. Yeah. Aww. 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 Little power supply robot hands. Mm -hmm. So did you, did you do the urine test on it? Um, no. Did we pee on the power supply? Is that what you're asking me? Well, who doesn't? Mm. We can add that mm. as a request for Lee for future reviews, if you'd like. Mm. It's going to be a Patreon-only like feature. That's some, yeah. He already did arc welding. I mean. So, uh, I mean, the RMX 1000 is $189. So if you need a 1,000-watt power supply, which is not a lot of people that are using 1,000-watt power supplies at this point. Um, and then, you know, 550 down to $114 as well. So, How come the special white is $20 more expensive than the special black? Because it's well, special. It's special. Special. Painting white, painting, painting stuff standard, white is hard. standard black. That's Gold racist. award from Lee on this. Yeah. Gold award from Lee on this. Check it out if you're looking for uh, a high quality unit like that. Changing title or changing directions completely is the Samsung C49 HG90. This is a monitor, a FreeSync 2 monitor that is a 49 inch ultra wide. And Ken asked the question. It's like super ultra wide. How wide? I don't even know if ultra wide is, is the too right. Wide. Is that even the right term? I don't know if ultra wide has a specific <laughs> it it like aspect ratio. I, I feel like it, it needs it to with it, this model. But maybe oh. they can do the EVGA thing. U U W. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was ultra, debating ultra calling wide. this a super ultra wide. That seems like what the Legitimate? industry would, would you think call that's it. what it is? No. No, you think they should. I think it's what they would call it. Okay. If they were coming yeah, because it's, it's definitely wider than your normal ultra wide panel. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so this, here's a picture of this guy. So, like, if you look at the icon, this is the Samsung provided imagery. It doesn't look particularly wide there, it doesn't mm -hmm. feel different. Uh, but if you look at it here, you, you start to see that this is, this is quite different. It's a uh, uh, not a 21 by 9. What is this, Ken? It's a. Uh, 34 by 32 no, by 9. 32 by 9, yeah. 32 by 9. Yeah, it's 216 so by 9. So let's suppose you had two 27 inch 1080p monitors. Yep. Yeah. And you shoved them next to each other. Yeah. And took the bezel out the middle. There you go. It's, it's this one. It's a 3840 by and 1080. Them a bit. Yeah. yeah, you got to flex them. You got to get them wet and moist. <laughs> yeah. So that they flex. No, just really? like, like plastic friction welding. You just rub them. <laughs> do, you, do you have to do <laughs> a hair dryer? <laughs> yeah, a hair dryer would help too. One of the things that's interesting, so these are curved displays. Uh, what are, are they? Uh, 1800R? They're mostly. Yeah. I didn't like the way that they did the curve. So this is interesting. This picture, it's it's kind of hard to see a little bit, but can you said that like 
the last four or five inches of it or six inches of it are straight. They're not curved. It, yeah. So on, on like, both the left and the right side, it kind of flattens out. And Alan, Alan is actually the one that noticed this to begin with. Yeah, I noticed it like just sitting in front of it like immediately. Did, did he get it as protractor? No, no. It's 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 dead <laughs> obvious. Like when you sit in front of it, it's dead obvious. Because if you have like something diagonal across a screen and you're looking at it, it really like yeah. is not it, like you it's already hard with a screen that's curved that the straight lines are not necessarily straight lines. And yeah. You kind of have to uh, like adjust for that mm -hmm. mentally. You can't do that with this one because it's not even a steady curve. I mean, you can't it really changes. tell if you're looking at it head on like you're supposed yeah, to be. But if you're at tell. all off axis, you can kind of see the parallax effect of when mm. it goes straight. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it, it's kind of weird. It's not really a deal breaker at all. It's just an interesting. Yeah, sort it's of as if you had. It. It's as if the center. It's as if you had a twenty-seven inch screen that was curved in front of you, but then you took another twenty-seven inch screen, cut it in half, and just that was not yeah. curved, and kind of tacked yeah. those on. You know Maybe I mean? that's exactly like, what they do. Do we think this is a production issue, or did they do this for some I think there technological were, or visual? I think it's just end it all the way to the ends. Damn it! No, I think it's just a like packaging and like the frame because you would have had to make the frame potentially even thinner. Okay. Think of how much extra packaging you had to do to ship one of these. Yeah, well, like, curved monitors are like that in general, right? Right, but this would that would have added like another couple of inches of depth. Yeah, to the panel, so then another just four to, to curve it box. some more, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Interesting. So, I mean, I get it, but it's just like it's it's weird. Right? You mentioned the stand. Ken is has a pretty big footprint. Yeah, depth I mean, or width or depth and width. Okay, for the most part. I mean, just to support a forty nine inch semi curved panel, like it's a really yeah. I mean, that's, that's large really panel, wide. And you have to support that weight somehow. Yeah. So you're using a lot of sort of wide Real depth estate. in your desk. Yeah. It now it is shallow though. It's like flat. Like the stand where it comes out towards you just runs flat on the desk. Yeah. Sure. Like there's other like Acer Predators and stuff where the it's just like a triangulated, like the legs kind of like mm -hmm. come down, mm -hmm. right? Those are just like it's just yeah, like but a I flat think if they're stand. flat, they take up more space than if they're sort of yes. curved up. That's it's true. Like, so let's talk about the the other specs. We said thirty eight forty by ten eighty. This is a FreeSync two, which insinuates variable refresh. It has that capability. Uh, it also insinuates some kind of HDR capability. In this case, Visa HDR 600 standards uh, support, which is what? Uh, beyond, I think it's like a 90% Adobe RGB typical coverage, I think is the spec for color gamut. It says Samsung quotes all the way up to typical 92%, yeah. minimum 88% yeah. Adobe RGB. So it's somewhere in a 90% Adobe RGB that you need to hit. Beyond that, the backlight has to hit, be able to hit 600 nits for a 10% chunk in the middle. Sustained. Sustained. Yeah. As well as 600 nits for an instantaneous flashing of the screen to white. I wonder how instantaneous instantaneous is. Well, we just watched the... A, but is it like There's a, spec. a third of a second? Yeah, do you know is, it is it less than that or something? I don't know the, I'm just it, curious. I, I was. What, I don't. Know I don't the need exact to answer it for me. There is a spec, but basically a brief flash of the yeah. whole screen, like to 600. Would you say the hertz was on this again? Is it 60 or no, above? It's, it's uh, higher than 60, right? It's yeah. uh, what is it? Where are the where's the, uh, it's a 144, 144. hertz. 144. For your display port, you can mm -hmm. get to 100. So HDMI. it's got the VR. Yeah, VRR yeah. range of 48 to 144 hertz via display port, 48 to 100 hertz via HDMI. So the that's, variable that's beautiful. The variable refresh range is actually pretty good, and and the range is wide enough that the low frame rate compensation stuff all works. And the resolution is low enough that it's easy to drive at above 60 hertz. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. two 1080p displays. Yeah. Um, any other? Com I mean, I think what we would say here is. We weren't really impressed with the HDR on this panel. No, it didn't really. Wasn't it really. Oh, just excuse me. Pour that drink on yourself. Mm, I'm fine. At least oh, it's, really? laptop. It's, only, it's only my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Suck the bourbon out of them. Quick, cut back to him when he takes them off. Yeah, <laughs> please don't. You can you can bend that far. <laughs> no, I just take them off and <laughs> then you suck the pants out. Oh. Detachable. Right. So about that HDR, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, smells, so, it smells mighty fine over here now. So why... Well, we did some testing with some games and some video playback, and you can tell some sort of highlights on the screen, but it doesn't really get bright enough to set any content off. Like, 
I know you have an HDR display TV at home. I have yeah. an HDR TV at home, and I'm pretty used to that experience. And this just doesn't deliver on it. it did, did you like watch uh, Blade Runner 4K HDR? Uh, 2049. I didn't watch Blade Runner. I watched oh, Coco. the monitor. You mean? I, what I'm curious about is, do is it? Do we have a different perspective because we have ha- had these TVs? I think so. Yeah, I think the TVs are yeah. kind of spoiling us for the experience. I mean, like, there's just not a whole lot of difference between looking at the SDR image and looking at the HDR image on this monitor, yeah. which is a shame. And if you're getting it because of the HDR, and you potentially want to watch HDR, like video content on it like film if hdrs went for your top two selling points i wouldn't buy this display right i would wait to see what comes Mm. because uh, we've got some news later in this podcast that stuff is coming and just sort of this first wave it's a quickly evolving yeah this first wave of hdr pc displays is disappointing i know jim's taking a look at one that's kind of doing the same thing it's just they're not really hitting the levels they need to and it's a difficult problem i'm like Putting that many local dimming zones into a desktop size panel has to be a very, very difficult problem. Is that what is that what the bottleneck is, do you think? Is it zoning? Just zoning and having enough LEDs to produce enough brightness. And having okay. the grade yeah, of So a TV in a bigger format has more space for more LEDs. Yeah, more you zones, put a three hundred and eighty four zone yeah. backlight in a that's capable of producing around a thousand nits into a 55 inch TV, it's yeah. way easier to do than in a, to a 27 inch monitor okay, or a 49 inch ultra. So, so, so can I can I throw in two positives and a negative for this? Absolutely, for you may. Okay, as as a user who is using three monitors with a really low internet bandwidth, <laughs> yeah, this may be really grim. Anyway, eventually I will remove the Vaseline from my camera. But okay, I've got three monitors. They're all 1920 by 1200. I've got it in, you know, SLI surround. But it's still three monitors. And they're old. They're 60 hertz. So this is, I would get three quarters, essentially, of the same experience because I don't have to deal with bezels. I've got 144 hertz, which is awesome. Yeah, one of the things so I those two things. One of the things are, I commented on when it was sitting on Ken's desk was that this would be a monitor Josh would want to use. But you're you're losing a lot of pixel density because yes. you have what twenty four inch yeah, displays I, now. Yeah, I understand that, but I don't use that much. I mean, sure, I've got three monitors here, but one, you know, my my right hand monitor. I have hardly anything ever running on no, it. I mean, ever. you're losing yeah. PPI, is what I mean. Like you yeah. have yeah. three what 24 inch 19 by 12 monitors now. Yeah, going yeah. to two 27 even... inch 1080p monitors is a stark difference in the amount of pixels on the screen. Yeah, you're kind of losing some. Yeah, but I'm, some real I'm old, and my eyesight is is growing dim. Mm, I see. And so, so it's not as big of a deal. What about the but general? Let me, let me tell you the worst part about it. Okay. Yes. Okay, it's FreeSync too, right? Yeah. You've got to need a GPU, GPU, Josh. Who the hell has AMD Vega 64 to drive this? Not a lot of people. Not, not a lot of many people. people at all. But I mean, you, that's not... It's hard to hold that against FreeSync 2 monitors in general, right? I know, but it's uh, it's disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about the... Can you, you made some comments on the general gaming experience of this. That was actually pretty good, though. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I've taken a look at an ultra wide display. Game support has increased a lot. Like, I was playing a lot of modern sort of AAA titles. Like, Far Cry 5 has really good ultra wide support. Like, when you get in a plane or like a helicopter or a car, it's, it's really nice to have that additional aspect ratio and it handles it well when you're shooting. There's some games like Civ 6 that just put the UI elements to the corner of the screen, which is really ridiculous on this display because you're kind of. Yeah. Either if you don't have a super high have TPI a big mouse, mouse pad. yeah, you're just constantly left and right going back and forth, which is annoying. There are it's, games it's like Ultra Watch, which purposely don't implement good 21 9 by 9 support because right. the developers think it's cheating because you have the extra field of view. Yeah. Which in a competitive shooter, you could make that argument. But overall, I was surprised at how good the sort of ultra wide support is and that the work developers put into 21 by 9 support they just didn't hard code it for that it also applies to these wider monitors they're smart yeah. about the implementations interesting and uh so we talked about the hdr support 
productivity wise, what were your thoughts on this? To me, especially have we had this conversation with Jim recently about uh, uh, how 1600 pixels was ideal and how it made a difference even over 1440 pixel height. Yeah. Now we're going back to 1080 height. It mm -hmm. just, it doesn't, this monitor doesn't feel, feel enough of my vertical field of view for me to want to use it. it. It seems like this monitor is not one you would buy or doing office work on. Yeah, no, I, think this, I think this is a gaming monitor. It's marketing marketed as one, sure. and I think if that's your primary use, it, it would be a good option. But yeah. if you're wanting to do a, a lot of work from home stuff, maybe not. I'm so sorry, much. but 144 hertz, do you know how smooth your mouse action is? Oh, yes, yes, so yes I do. <laughs> Actually, we do oh, know. Oh, it's so just. We do know. Uh, <laughs> I'm stuck at 60 hertz so, with 12 year old well, monitors. When we wrote this, it was 940, 948, 948 dollars. Now it's like 990. I, people commented on the article; they've seen it low 800s, mid low 800s, which I think is a way more reasonable price. I think a thousand bucks is a little too much to ask for this yeah. display. But if you can get down to the seven eight hundred dollar range, you're interested in a display like this. Yeah, so I'd, I'd give it a look. Yeah, I, I am. I am a little bit disappointed in the HDR stuff. This is we had. A, what was the other monitor we had? It was an LG something? It yeah, was like our first it was an LG HDR by display nine. we got in. Yeah. And even if you take all of the like Windows compatibility stuff out of the equation, mm -hmm. which is better now with eighteen oh three. Yeah, a but bit. even if you take all that out of it, like I didn't get any of the impression from that monitor or this monitor like I got when when I bought that LG OLED. HDR and we played Resident Evil 7 on it for the first yeah. time. Yeah. Right. No, it's like, holy crap. Oh, it's yeah. like, you know, when we visited AMD two, three years ago at, at um, CES and they had the first HDR monitors, uh, yeah. the TVs yeah. there. They were all TVs. And you walked in and you looked at them and you're like, holy shit, that's, yeah. that's really, yeah. that is. You immediately you knew see. that this was better. Yes. Yeah. It was as dramatic as going from SD to HD was yeah. back in the day. Mm. With with these, like we would have to like we would have to like, like okay yeah I think that's kind of right we, we would there. question if it was in HDR mode yeah right we'd be like is it and we were specifically looking for it and using content that would normally pop yeah but you it's know. disappointing because I, what I don't want to happen to HDR is what happened to 3D what happens to all of these things that are yeah. like. Or VR, VR, right? Or Marketed VR. and then killed because of low people who want, you know, monitor companies that just want to attach it. And to be fair to to Samsung, like they're meeting a spec. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's so it's technically it's the specs issue that it's they would what, that they HDR would HDR six hundred, yeah, HDR, HDR six hundred, which is the middle yeah. HDR. Yeah, display HDR four hundred. There's a, a four hundred option, which to me is baloney. Like so it's, it increased color gamut, I believe. It's but true, fair. But that's, that's part way of it. At that point. Yeah. Anyway, check out that review. I think I think you can come to your own conclusions there. We have several other HDR monitors and more stuff to talk about here uh, on the podcast. Even uh, as we move on to, we'll, we'll quickly touch on the last uh, story here. Chris posted a review of the Logitech G513. These are the mechanical gaming keyboards from Logitech, as I just said. Uh, but these are actually using Romer G switches, but now there's two. There used to only be one. Now there's linear and tactile key switches. I personally have a strong distaste for linear key switches. Yeah. Tactile, it, I like. Is it tactile with clicky or just feel? Uh, like, is I mean, it a blue or a brown? It's my key. It's So it's their own switches, but like the last two keyboards I've had on my desk mm -hmm. are... Romer G switches that only existed in tactile before this okay. before this launch. Um, they've just kind of you know reshuffled and renamed. It's, it's like the equivalent of a brown. I don't know the answer to that. It feels clicky. It's always been different. They've always been quieter, but tactile, and that's what I appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but this is the G five thirteen. So it's available on both of those uh, derivatives, if you will. They kind of have a very minimal styling and design, as you can see here, which I actually really greatly appreciate. While well, as much as I liked the G910 that was on my desk for a long time, it had the, hey, I'm a gamer look to it of, you know, sharp angles and unnecessary accents like that. Some people like it. I didn't. Um, but the keyboard feel was was still great. So this has a lot of that. It, it's missing some multimedia function, right? Mm, if you kind of yeah. look up here, it doesn't have any of that. I think it has function key support for that. But yeah. I, I kind of like having dedicated buttons for that. 
Um, still has a good design. It's a pretty looking keyboard, though. It, it is. It is like the stainless it's, steel, it's like brushed stunning. metal finish yeah, on the back solid. of it. Yeah, and it's and it's heavy Industrial. and weighty. Industrial, yes. which a, a heavyweight backplate in a mechanical keyboard actually helps a lot to yeah. make up for any potential downfalls the switches might have. If you it get, removes you get, bounce you get to, your nice, key, to your desk. Solid tactile feel, even if it's a linear switch, you still get kind of the bottoming out, yeah, hitting something feel. Yeah, agreed. Uh, it still uses the the Logitech gaming software, which is still really good. Uh, the ability to have macro keys and all that type of setup, RGB, you know, keyboard coloring and and all that. These are I blame Ujesh for what for everything. Okay, that's fair. It's good. He's accepting of that. I blame him. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, 144 bucks, 150 bucks or so for both of these. I highly recommend them. I am a big fan of the Romer G uh, switches in general. Like I said, I've been using as my. I've gone back and forth between a lot of keyboards as I as I try stuff out, but I always come back to a, a Logitech Romer G of some kind. So, uh, no ad this week. We'll jump right into news, if you don't mind. You want me to do an ad? I can make one up. Let's do, PC a, Perspective let's do a ED ad. Uh, <laughs> the thought has crossed. It had, We almost did. Education. Came close. Yes, yeah. ed- education reform. No, not reform. I like it the way it is. I don't know what political spectrum I'm supposed to be on here. Uh, anyway, Spectre has new stuff, and not the James Bond movie as Jeremy this would was, insinuate. This was, no, Scott it, was, it was, wasn't it? Oh, Scott. Uh, yeah. Scott. Canadians. Canadians. Yeah. No offense, Jeremy, yeah. but a little bit of offense. Um, okay, we know we've got the better sense of humor anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a couple of things that stood out to me. So there was another uh, variant of Spectre that was announced from the Google research group um, called Speculative Store Bypass, which is as fun to learn about as it sounds. Um this one, you know, AMD had a response, Intel had a response, ARM had a response. I was kind of surprised at how little uptake this news got. Because everybody's just kind of like, you know. Do we have specter fatigue? It's, yeah. like, yep. it's like in, the movie, in the movie Clue when they find yet another dead body and they just kind of like, yeah. And they just kind of like walk <laughs> off. <laughs> that's basically it. So there's a couple of things. One, if you're Intel, AMD, ARM, whoever, that's great to hear that there's specter uh, yeah. fatigue, right? Like, yeah. oh, great. Nobody's going to crap all over us because of this. As a consumer, and if you're a consumer, uh, you know, watchdog type of mentality person, you're like, ah, actually, you want more media coverage of this. You want more people well, working on one this. One of these potentially has more of an impact than people might be thinking, I think. From, from what I was initially reading, at least. So I, I had heard from a couple of people that this was coming. I didn't know exactly when it was, but I knew that these all these processor companies were working on their, their fixes and mitigations and mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. you have. Um, and AMD... Uh, will be it says it'll be patched as far back as Bulldozer. Intel has their security bulletin that's going to be fixed as far back as Nehalem. Um, obviously, Intel's the company that's been hit the hardest by the Spectre meltdown stuff in its entirety. Right. ARM is interesting in that they don't make the processors; they make the fundamental make underlying the architecture and the IP that their yeah. partners integrate, and so it's. It's kind of it's an interesting dichotomy with ARM in that they are both blameless and the most to blame for that ecosystem. Right. So I you know, I've been told that very soon by this summer, all of their RTL will be updated to support this stuff. RTL. Like fixes. Their the the IP will be updated to fix oh. or have the mitigations. Yeah, R- RTL okay. is the are the files that they send to the guys. Gotcha. Who actually make the processors. Yep. You you download the RTL, you put it in a fab printer and you hit the, the oh, control P. You just, <laughs> control P and yeah, it prints okay. out it's, the process. It's a little bit more than that, Eagle, but sure. And yeah. then you hit yeah. the auto yeah. route. Yeah. But it's but a same, really, same idea. It's a really expensive So in other printer. words, if 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 their partners wanted to take that new RTL, revalidate mm-hmm. and ship any future processors with that fix, they'd be able to do it, right? right. So, but now does that? Fix, but they can't force people to do it. Does that fix slow it down though? Uh, no, I, the, a little bit. No, I think all indications are that the hardware mitigation is less impactful than the software mitigation. Okay. Well, it makes sense, but yeah. it's still going to be there. No, that I, th- I think they they say it, it it's 
in the noise, but it's a little bit of a performance decrease, but not okay. It's hmm. not right. like you know twenty percent. No, it's it's more like one to five percent, depending on the workload. Okay. Right. So saw, there's another specter. I saw something in mixed in with one of these. I think it was the variant four stuff where they were like, you know, that the default was going to be potentially not patched or like the patch would be in place, but not enabled. And it would be. Yeah, up I to hadn't people. heard anything about that yet. I, I haven't got specifically any more read it somewhere. On it. Oh, OK. Yeah. But like, yeah. So it seemed like like it wasn't, you know, a huge threat, at least for variant four. Right. Yeah, we'll see. Uh. So, We'll be following up more on that and yeah, seeing what yeah. these guys say and then how it affects the rest of our world. Uh, before we get to the next story, we do have some more patron additions. Lieutenant Dan's legs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just, just, we found them. Just pledged $1.99. It took 500 episodes. We've been asking all these time, oh. all these years. $1.99. Thank you. We have a pledge <laughs> edit. Incredible. Pledge edit from $10 to $13.37. From the only deodorant I need is bacon fat. The- <laughs> All right. Is that, All right. that, that is sweet. Rebecca Donahy pledged $10 as a new pledge. Thank you so much. And Fish Sticks just pledged a dollar. Do you legs. like Fish Sticks? <laughs> no, I don't like Fish Sticks. Do you like Fish Sticks? Fish is bad to me. Yeah, fair enough. Very bad. Thank you guys, everybody. Uh, All right. So let's talk about some free sync stuff, some more of it. Samsung is updating their some of their or is it all of them can their 2018 QLED TVs with FreeSync support. Yeah. This is something like that we saw like talk when was this discussed? It was a couple months ago. It was, yeah, it was a couple like months, maybe two ago. months ago. Just it was CES. around when the Xbox FreeSync support launched. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh so it's the majority of Samsung's 2018 TVs they go as low as the NU8000 which isn't technically a QLED TV but it's like sort of their mid-range TVs. They don't go any lower than that with the yeah. firmware support. So they're, they're, apparently they've released a firmware update, 1103, adds free sync option to the game mode menu. Yeah, they don't have any like information about what's in the firmware, but ratings yeah. confirmed today that they're test that they received the update to 1103. They have free sync option in the game menu, and they're currently testing it out. I talked with AMD today, and they're like, "Huh? Well, that wasn't <laughs> supposed to happen yet. It went out on the 21st." <laughs> Uh, so there was no, you know, I think there was probably a coordinated launch occurring or potentially occurring. And now the guy who's supposed to be in charge of it's on vacation for the week. And they're like, oh, well, this, this is great news. Um, regardless of the timing and, and marketing behind it, this is a really cool addition to the market. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So now not, not only do you have like the PC that supports it, the Xbox, as Ken pointed out, supports Xbox One supports free sync. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm cur- are these TVs 60 hertz panels max, or do we know for sure yet? That's what I, that's what I'm really curious about. I think they're at least I think they're at least 1080p 120 hertz panels. 1080p. You mean yeah. the panel or the interface to the panel? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like to the set. That's the problem. Yeah, I know that's the problem, but like you don't like it's it's difficult to test that stuff on TVs. Yeah, correct. I know. So I don't I don't know. I mean, from what we know of them so far, like just Samsung TVs I saw TVs reference in general. to them saying a free sync up to 120 hertz in an article. Someone was quoting There's that. There's two people in the chat that are saying that they're internally 120, yeah. 4K 120. Internally, yes. Well, you can't do 4K 120 regardless because the interface is yeah, support. that's the thing. You, you can, well, how many frames per second can you get over the wire to the set? Like, what is it going to allow you to send it? Got it. Is the catch, right? Yeah, if they're... Because these are HDMI, they're not DisplayPort TVs. Correct. So right. but you would be HDMI able to 2.0. do 1080p 120 over HDMI 2. Do 1080p 120 over that. Yeah, yeah. Which the Xbox also added support for recently. Yeah. Interestingly, hertz. there's an ad on Amazon right there for this exact TV. It's like I've been searching for it <laughs> for a bit. It's right next to the article. <laughs> oh, is that last year's model? Yeah. No, that's oh, that's the current. No, that's that's okay. it. Yeah. Interesting. Because it's got the new picture on. It. Um, yeah. So, so we don't know. We don't actually know if this is FreeSync two support, which has stipulations like certain color gamut requirements and yeah. LFC. Mm-hmm. Just no and, details and, about it. And really. AMD, AMD hasn't AMD hasn't talked to the media about it officially yet. Right. Um, Samsung clearly hasn't talked to the yeah. media about it. We officially. have no idea what the FreeSync range is. No idea what the FreeSync range is. Can uh, it do HDR? 
while doing free sync. I I would you would bet a lot of money on that. Surely but it would have to, but we don't know you're for right. sure. There's a chance. There's a chance that it doesn't. I look at this though as this is really beating Nvidia yes. at its own game. This puts, at this point, pr- this puts right? a lot of pressure on Nvidia. That all BFG, of a sudden. what was it? BFGD. The BFGD. The big format gaming displays yeah. that they showed at CES that were in a really rough form. And you still can't there, buy them. And you still can't buy them. And we have no indication of when you'll be able to buy them. Right. Um, this. This proves this. This is this is a proof point that an open standard can be useful and, and validated and accelerated and above being that. and in shipping and in now shipping firmware from yeah. a major television producer. Yeah, this is yeah, not I mean, this is not wasabi mango. No, <laughs> this is freaking Samsung. This is it's Samsung. It's a guy it's a, yeah. that sell hundreds of thousands. It's probably of the LCDs largest year. TV manufacturer yeah. in the world. Samsung. Yeah, I'm pretty sure so. they are. I'd so say like, Samsung over LG. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. That is significantly. Serious pressure, yeah. on Nvidia, like, and and it, and it's not just you know it's not just dependent on PC. They have the console, right? Yeah. And in theory, I would expect Sony to add that to the PS4 at some point. Would be right. my would be my guess, right? Yeah. Um, but if you want a PC with a discrete GPU driving your television in a variable yeah. refresh fashion, I, now you, I'm really really eager to test this out. Not eager enough to go buy one yet, um, <laughs> but I'm like right on that edge. You thought about it? I thought about it. Uh, but like more of what I'm doing now is like, say, Hey, AMD, do you want us to test this? All you need to do is send me whatever's the biggest model TV. <laughs> whatever. I, <laughs> I think they look like a 70. <laughs> they make a 70. Yeah, yeah. The one well, I was pr- sort of pricing out is the 55 inch Q7, which yeah. is the second from the top. They have the Q8, Yeah. but the Q7 has been getting really good reviews and the 55 inch is 1700 bucks. Which is a lot of money. However, if you compare it to the next store, well, we, before we get to that, to that as well, we will Aww. say Acer. All, it was a good. It was a good lead image. You didn't read the thing. I was on the the rundown. You know the thing. Oh. Acer. I read Acer. FreeSync Nitro <laughs> displays. These are much less exciting, unfortunately, for Acer to to follow up here because these are 1080p displays, 21, 23, 27 inch models, uh, all of which are 4K, um, or at least available in 4K. Got it. These the are press not, releases sort of foggy. Oh, and they're not VR, they're not HDR displays, right? No, no HDR, but uh, the VGO is 144 hertz refresh rate, and the RGO is uh, down to 75 as a max. So that's 4K 144. Well, see, and this is where it gets confusing because that would be interesting, <laughs> wouldn't it? It's not. Does it just it's say not. up to 4K option? Well, it, it oh. says they're available in HD uh, 1440p or 4K, mm, but they okay. don't sort of specify. Does that mean the smallest model is the smallest resolution? If yeah. each of them are available in these resolutions, and when it says that there is a top refresh of 144 hertz, what is that? apply to and what's the compromise when you hit 4k but, the, but these are budget displays it's definitely right? not 4K. Oh, hell yeah. they, they start right. at 130 for the 144 hertz yeah. and 170 these are not these awesome. are not 4k 144 no hertz they, displays, they can't then. be yeah not for 170 dollars but so, good to see budget displays now do like yeah, budget free sync free sync like. for 130 bucks yeah. is is great Absolutely. don't get me wrong yes i'm just saying yeah 4K and these have got to be TN panels at that point. If you're if you have a 4K display, they for say they're IPS, really, which again just seems weird. Well, some of them I don't know. I, you can get good know. IPSs for eighty to ninety bucks. Really, for twenty two yeah. inch, right. but not one hundred forty four yeah. hertz. They're yeah. they're not one forty four, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're they're making a push, exploring undiscovered country here. Yeah. Yeah, we need more cool. specs, damn it, Jeremy. Come on, oh, just yeah, get your shit do. together. Yeah, damn it, Jeremy. Yeah. Well, I, it's not like they'll return my emails or anything, and the press release is really, really bloody confusing. So as we move back to the original transition that Ken had from the Samsung stuff <clears throat> for a $1,700 TV. Here, girding my loins. <laughs> to the... Uh, <laughs> There's a couple of stories here, right? We have the Asus... I know, I, I know how to do that, by the way. GERD. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw a cartoon with with how you you do that with your little dress sarong thing. Both Asus and Acer have now had HDR. I'll wait. All right, go ahead. Acer and Asus have both have uh, HDR enabled G Sync display news come out. Asus actually sent out a press release announcing pricing and availability of their 27 inch G Sync HDR display. The uh, PG27UQ. 
whatever. Uh, we saw this two years ago. Duke, Duke, CES. HDR, yeah. GS2016. CES 2016, we saw was this. Was it really 2016? Yes, 2016. It was 2016. Not 2017? No. Well, yes, then too, but the same panel. So we saw it three years in a row? Uh... Because we we just had CS maybe it was 2017. Okay. I think you're thinking CS 2017. The past two CESs we've, yes. see, we've seen this panel. So it's been almost a year and a half since we first saw this stuff. Yep. And also the Predator X 27 is the same. So what's interesting about this ASUS one, Ken? HDR 1000. Uh, they are certified for display HDR 1000. ASUS is claiming this is the world's first gaming monitor with display hdr 1000 certification that's a little disingenuous as last last two weeks ago we saw a phillips 43 inch monitor i guess they're not considering that a gaming monitor maybe because it's 43 inches maybe because it's not like it doesn't have variable refresh yeah so it's yeah. just kind of stretching it here two thousand dollars but it's the second hdr or display HDR 1000 certified monitor, which is nice. It's using a 384 zone backlight with a peak brightness of 1000 nits. Kind of so like we were talking about earlier. It's a so the if I remember back, the HDR 1000 spec is so it's a thousand nits, 10 percent, right? Yeah, I, I 10 percent of the screen at a thousand nits, yeah. or a flash of a thousand nits yeah. for full screen, and then sustained at 800. I don't remember the sustained. Okay. I can go back and look at the previous yeah. story. I think it was either 600 or 800. Um, 97% DCI P3 color space, 99% Adobe RGB color space. Um, those you couldn't are, really ask for a whole lot more in a monitor. That's, that's really, really good. Um, there it's, are Asus it's 600 claiming, nits uh, long say, duration. Say 600 nits long duration. Okay. Uh, Asus is saying these are, these are um, calibrated screens these are like pre-calibrated yeah. out of the box hmm. delta e less than three yeah okay that's, yeah that's not hard to hit um Same. yeah ambient lighting control They've they have the, the laser on the bottom of it of course <laughs> looks like they look like rog they, they, they can project an rg logo onto your wall so Sweet. you know you can uh the first thing you do is turn that shit off I guess. so before i before i mention the price i will say having seen you know, early production models of this at CES and whatnot, mm -hmm. they look amazing. These are the ones that do what the televisions do. Well, in we don't H know what the televisions do yet. What do you mean? What? Like the HDR, in other words. Oh, that look impressive yes. to see. It yes. looks like it's HDR. I agree. Right? It, yes. As opposed to the other panels we were talking about earlier, the where we questioned. Right. Yeah. These are this is a two this is a night this is a two thousand dollar monitor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, how much was the ROG Swift? A thousand bucks, I think. When it yep. launched, a thousand dollars. Yep. And that was 144 hertz kind of TN, or was it like a uh, VA? It was, ooh. it was TN. Yeah, it was TN, but it yeah. looked, it, it was good. TN. It was a really good TN. Yeah. Okay. So now this is a two thousand dollar display that is, in my view, much later to market than we expected. Yep. Um. You know, having seen it in January of 2017. But wait, what's the, the first time. what's the refresh on these? 144 hertz. Is it 4K? So, so this is 4K, 144 hertz it, Display Port HDR. There, HDR there is a caveat. You can only run at 96 hertz with HDR enabled. Yep. Because really? of Display Port 1.4. Oh shit. Okay. Trying to fit, I mean, more bits per you pixel. can't. Like it's 4K, 4K at 96 hertz yeah. is, would be very difficult to drive at this point too. But okay. as a future That's proof, two thousand dollar investment. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so are these does that make him DP one point three four? Okay. Yeah, one point four. But there is a standard that exists that's just maybe not implemented by a lot of places that is higher bandwidth. HDMI two point one will do it, I believe. Mm, this monitor doesn't. No. Yeah, okay. So along with the Asus announcement, we also we haven't seen an official Acer announcement yet, but we did see a pre-order go up on I mean, they website. also listed it on the Acer store with did the they? same details this week. This so. is actually the first place we saw that $2,000 price tag was for the Predator X27 4K, um, or better known as the Predator X27 BMII PHZX. <laughs> Love their parts. What the <sighs> hell? Now, this says release date of June 1st. Yeah. The Asus press release said end of June. It said late June. Late June. Mm -hmm. So now I'm curious, will the Acer one actually ship June 1st? Yeah. I kind I of don't will. think it will. You think it will? I think it will. I kind of don't think it will. 
I think they might. They've already been so delayed, and like we heard several times that it's it's going to be May. Uh, that like <laughs> it's gonna be by, May. by the end of May, by the end of May, by the end of May, that June first seems believable yeah. to me. Yeah. Hey, PC Perspective is live. Now. Yeah. You know what the big problem is with all this? So this was the June, Nobody can this was the January it. 2017 video we did. Mm-hmm. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. What, what's 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 got you? I am going to delay my next monitor until all this is figured out yet again for another six to eight months. Yeah, don't forget yep. there's a 200 hertz ultra wide coming. Says who? Acer? It's the same that we saw two CESs ago. Also, <sighs> you're killing me, Smalls. 1440p. Yeah, but think how much wide. that's going to be. What I wanted was updated monitors from my 2005 series HP. Yeah. IPS. The, the problem is mm. that I think both of those new types of panels are both going to be like two grand. Well, I, I mean, I, well, I guess they could also be two thousand. I was thinking they'd be more. I think the ultra would be more. Maybe if they're released anywhere close to the same time, it's period. lower resolution than this. Is the thing. yeah, yeah. But yeah. I would, I would think it would be at least two thousand. Ultra wides cost more. more. Yeah, for the given sort of similarities, or smaller production runs. I still, all that, I, I think the two K is kind of high. It's not kind of high. It's like really high. Yeah. Now, <laughs> yeah. Like this should be maybe should let's be say they can't tops. make they can't they're having issues making a lot of these and they're gonna get as much as they can get out of them. Yeah. Yeah, my indications are that production is the holdup. It's not that they were just like, eh, we don't really feel like doing it. I kind of wish that they would drop all the HDR BS and just give us a faster no. refresh 4K. No. No. This is no. this is these cost. are gonna be the first monitors that HDR probably works well on. <laughs> yeah, HDR <laughs> that's me, the important part. To me, I don't give a crap about the 4K. You want the as HDR much more? as I care about the HDR. I, like, I, I would HDR take, is uh, top. Like real mm? good HDR yeah. is way more important to me than 4K, and way more important to me than 144 versus 100 hertz or whatever it is. Right? Okay. If this was or 96 this, versus 75, was, as it might be, uh, with the HDR mode. HDR 1440p, 165 hertz for a thousand bucks, I'd buy one. For, for a thousand? thousand, so you're yeah. saying half the price that they're currently selling it? Yeah, yeah. For a th- yeah, sure. I'd, pr- I'd probably be interested too. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I said 1440p instead of 4K. Oh, 1440p. Oh, I see. I yeah. gave a concession. Yeah. yeah, I'm not even worried about the 4K. Yeah, no. Yes, I'm with you there. Yeah, I would. I would do 25 by 14, 144, 165 hertz, whatever yeah. it is. Real HDR. Yeah, thousand bucks. There's your selling point. Um, but my guess is that the panel production, they just, they have to, they had to pick one for panel production and go yeah. for it. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious if these monitors will run at a higher refresh at a lower resolution. They should. Because in theory, the bandwidth is there. So you'd be able to hit at least 144 rather than 96 at 25 by 14. Yeah. You should be able to do. Yeah. But I just haven't seen, I mean. They would have to tell us that they would be able to do that. Yeah. Right. Like the panel would have to. To be able to negotiate that yeah. in a different way, right? Like we haven't seen the other G Sync panels do that historically. Like usually it's Correct. this is your max refresh rate. It doesn't yes. matter if you lower. Correct. You know. You're right. Yeah. So it seems likely that in the month of June we'll see Acer and Asus, these monitors finally exist. Not February or March like we thought. Not yeah, Q1. 2017 like we thought, uh-huh. but mid 2018. And they're gonna be really expensive. Um Okay, but I'm I'm still happy because <clears throat> yes, please, this is please improvement tell me. from 2005 to 2015 that we saw nothing oh, other that's than true. well, I don't think we some, saw nothing. I think VRR is a pretty sell, significant addition. Well, high refresh rates, but we I mean, VRR. You know, think of resolution and HDR and color gamuts and that it was all. I I, I think Ken's right. The the VRR and the high refresh rate. Were those changes and that 14, happened like, in that time span? Like larger than 1080p resolutions became mainstream. Yeah, I mean, it was 25 by 14. The Korean displays yeah. that kind of came out and pushed that at low cost. It's still, what's on my desk at home? <laughs> I, I agree with you, Josh. That like, there was a, 4, 4K has taken way longer than I thought it would yeah. take. But to be fair, yeah. we don't have the GPUs to really do it well yet. Right, a Titan XP is still a struggle to push games 60 hertz 4K high image quality settings. Sure. So whatever. Yes, do I do I wish we had killed off every 1080p display that has existed? Absolutely. But, but what else would I test with? I don't know. <laughs> Three of them apparently. Six forty by. All right, let's move on. We got to get through the rest of this crap. Jeremy, tell me about DRAM prices. Are they going way down? 
They may. That's, at least going down. It's not good enough. Oh, you know, they're, they're, well, there's still servers and cell phones chewing them all up. Yeah. But uh, apparently the cryptocurrency guys are not buying like they used to be. It's like there were a bunch of robberies and the price fell or something. I <laughs> no idea. Uh, but uh, so the Nikkei is saying that they've seen serious drops in demand, which means there is now RAM stacking up at factories, yeah. which means lower prices for us in a little bit. Yeah. And also mentioned the same thing trend is going on with GPUs where the, their stores actually have them in stock and are they're sitting there and not selling. Hmm. Good. Which is an amazing change. <laughs> Good. Now, I will say, I just looked up, went to Coinbase. Uh, it's down to $7,600 for Bitcoin, which is down 18% this month. But if you look at it year on year, it's still up 205%. <laughs> True. So keep that in mind. But if you look at it over the last, I don't know, since December, it oh, went from 19,000 <laughs> down to 7,000. So there's, yes, hopefully hopefully that sticks with it. Uh, what else we have? Oh, Alan, Intel and Micron jointly announced QLC NAND flash. This is quad level cell, which uh, based on a very in- intuitive tweet that I heard is 33% more. 33% more uh, bits per cell than... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Than TLC math, because math, yes. Uh, so yeah, I, just, I mean, people have been talking about uh, you know four bits per cell. It's for, logical for, progression. We went for from years, single right? to multi, which yeah. was not two, but multi to triple. And techni- now quad. Technically, everything else is supposed to be multi-level cell. It's all ML. Yeah, but we never had a uh, two-level cell. But it's uh, it was never branded or called that. There was never two level. That's the other thing. It's kind of a misnomer. The whole level cell thing is like wrong now because oh. it's really four bits per cell, which is so actually 16, 16 levels, levels yeah. right? So, but instead of calling it 16 level cell, like that's, I don't know. Anyway, I understand. Um, Quad so bit level people cell. People have talked about this for years. It's just that implementing it is much harder because you're trying to take, you know, a very small volume of space, store electrons in it on yep. a piece of silicone. Silicone, silicone, yeah. Ooh, whatever. Silicon. Um, <laughs> I like the 96 levels. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, um, for grouting your tub. So you're, you're trying to do that, but you're also trying to do it to such a, a, a precise degree that you can distinguish between 16 different voltages. Like once that, once those bits are stored there. Right? Yeah. Um, which is tricky in practice, right? It takes time. You, you really have to, like your flash really has to be kind of on point right like you know cells have to not leak as much like very controlled like the you know that whole thing where your yields are getting better and better and you're tuning in your you know your your process over time and everything like you really have to have that you have to just have to be all over it to get to the point where you can be storing four bits per cell um so intel and micron are apparently now at this point uh and you know to the point where they can comfortably say uh that Intel is like, okay, well, we're we're doing it. We don't we're not announcing products yet, mm. but like we're making the flash. It's in it's in production. And Micron also went as far. I don't think we had the the story in the show notes, but Micron went as far as to announce uh, upcoming enterprise uh, QLC SATA SSDs. Okay, meant for you know this is meant for more like uh, content delivery sort of stuff, right? You're not when you store four bits per cell, you can't do a bunch of writes and have crazy high endurance. Just like with TLC, there's always a, a trade-off. Reduction. Right? Yeah. Like, so there's your trade-off. Um, but Micron's more than happy to sell some SATA SSDs that, you know, uh, people, uh, enterprise-type customers can put into their existing systems that might have actually had SATA hard drives in there. And they just maybe want some speedier storage or just something that's, you know, a little bit more reliable or robust compared to spinning rust. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that's that's kind of why they're going the SATA route first because they're figuring, you know, the don't expect crazy random write performance, but your read performance is going to be pretty good. Um, and and we see that with even when you go all the way up to TLC flash, uh, the place where you see the hit, the performance hit is in the writes. The right. reads are generally like top speed no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Um, so same kind of thing can be expected for for QLC. Just the endurance is not going to be great. Uh, you know, don't go, don't go run out, buy one of those uh, Micron Enterprise QLC SSDs if you come across one and start like installing your OS to it, you know, but if like, you do it once, it's fine. Well, yeah. Steam game drive. Sure. Uh, um, yeah. 
but no, not something not like the drive you're hammering on every day. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, good mm-hmm. stuff, right? Just the fact that that will be a thing. And, you know, who knows? I maybe. like cheaper SSDs, 10 cents a gig. It's coming soon. I mean, that's, that's how you get there, right? For like real. You, you have to somehow take less die space, right? And then the other part of the announcement is that they're, they're working on um, 96 layer. Oh, okay. That, that's a separate... Separate thing than QLC. Yeah, it's not working. QLC and 96 layer. No, okay. no, no. Well, they, they included it in the announcement, but they were not in production of 96 layer. They were just like, got it. Right. You know, we're, we're doing 64 we now. now. 64. Yeah, okay. we're at 64 now. And which that's what they're going to do uh, four bits per cell on is their, right. six, their existing 64 layer tech. Um, but, you know, potentially another 50% more capacity per die once they can start doing I like it. 96 layer. Right? 10 cents per gig. Here we come. Uh, yeah. What comes after quad? I mean, I don't even. It's what's what's the what's it'd be, the it'd be an S. Wint. Sept. Sept. Hexa. But then, that's, but then that's single level cell, so I don't know what they're gonna do if they ever get there. SLC is one bit per cell. I got nothing. Uh, NZXT announces the H500 and H500i cases with tempered glass. Sebastian wrote this up. Um, <clears throat> this is a a kind of like a budget friendly version uh, of a lot of the features that made the H seven hundred I so interesting. These are sixty nine dollars for the standard model, ninety nine dollars for the uh, cam powered H five hundred I, which I I like the designs of these. They completely hide the power supply unit down there on that side of the door. Still, lots of uh, visual access, if you will. Looks like it comes with. The ability to mount your graphics card vertically is that what you, optional bracket. Oh, it's optional. If you so desire. And, and honestly, that's what you should want to do, right? If you want to choke your airflow of your graphics card. Yeah, as you do in order to make <laughs> yeah. it visually appealing because that's the part you spent the most money on, right? All steel construction, uh, available in four color combos, tempered glass side panels, wire management, of course with a patent-pended cable management system, water cooling insulation is simplified using removable bracket for either all-in-one CPU coolers or custom loop configurations. I like that idea. Kind of a removable bracket you attach stuff to and then slide back into place. Wow, yes. T- kind of latches, as opposed to oddly having to hold one hand up top and the screwdriver in the three bottom. Hands to do it. You yeah. almost need two people to install an all-in-one cooler in cases a lot of times, which uh, I find... Very, very, very frustrating. Mm-hmm. Uh, the H500i has a smart device built in RGB and digital fan controller, um, Q plus grid plus functionality, adaptive noise reduction, fan control mode, cam powered RGB lighting, and vertical GPU mount optional. Showcases the gaming power inside. Good looking case, early June. I'm sure we'll see it uh, covered more in depth at, uh, at Computex. So. Good stuff there. NVIDIA has a new, I, I think that uh, a bit of a typo rundown is a little, little wrong there. It's a GTX GT, 1050, GT, 3 ah. gigabyte. GTX yeah, GT 1050, 1030 on the mind for some reason. Transpose that pretty well. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so this is kind of a quiet introduction. <clears throat> no launches, no reviews. Uh, it is a three gigabyte version, GDDR5 of the 1050. Um, the new card, as Tim wrote this up for us, the new card is closer to the GTX 1050 Ti than the name would suggest, as it uses the same 768 CUDA cores rather than the 640 of the GTX 1050 2 gigabyte. Uh, GDDR5 memory is where the card differs from the T- 1050 Ti, though as NVIDIA has cut the number of memory controllers by one, along with corresponding ROP and cache, meaning the 1050 3 gig has a smaller memory bus and less, mem- less memory bandwidth than the 1050 2 gig and 1050 Ti 4 gig. So so more people on a smaller bus. If you're yes, if you're properly confused, you should be. They basically added more memory but it's a tighter M- memory bus. bus. Yeah. yeah. Um which obviously affects your your peak memory bandwidth. So uh, the 1050 Ti 3 gig is a 96 bit memory bus. It's been a long time since I've seen anything less than 128 bit on uh on like a G4, you know, I what I would consider a mainstream GeForce or Radeon branded product. Seven gig, seven gigabit GDDR5, eighty-four gigabytes per second of uh, total memory bandwidth versus the other previously released cards, one hundred twenty-eight bit memory bus and one hundred twelve gigabytes per second of bandwidth. So, 
Josh, any, do you think there's any, but I mean, there's obviously going to be performance hit for it, but do you think this is a rebalancing of GPU performance with memory capability and that we shouldn't see a huge reduction in bandwidth comparatively or in performance comparatively? Probably not. I think the, uh, the biggest thing is, is most games require a whole lot more frame buffer than, uh, I mean, you then memory bandwidth. You take, yeah, exactly. And so, You've got compression technologies in there, and you've got a little bit more, you know, teraflops. And, um, you know, you may see in certain applications a hit, but I think it's going to be more than offset by having extra memory. I mean, we played all, you know, Far Cry 5, other stuff, which requires more local memory. Yeah. Yeah, I've been so, doing some notebook game testing recently, and you'll be amazed about a game set, bitch, if you have less or two gigs or less of mm, VRAM. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned the well, Teraflops. I mean, they did this a long time ago. I'm trying to remember, like, the 580 or 680 series. They, they put out a version, like a, a GTS or something, and I, I bought one that had more memory on the card, but a yeah, smaller bus. Well, I don't know uh, what bus, card that I'm was. Trying to remember what card it was. It was a long time ago. Yeah, I mean this one did do it. This one's confusing still as well because the new 1053 gig has a 2.33 teraflop rating, while the 1050 Ti has a 2.14 teraflop rating. So it actually has a higher, you know, peak theoretical throughput and compute capability, though it has, you know, less memory bandwidth than it and one gig less frame buffer. Look at those clocks, though. Yeah, yeah, the clock speeds are are surprisingly high, right? They're they're higher than uh, all the other parts on this on this list for certain. Seventy, still seventy five watt TDP, no external power connection. Um, targeted pricing estimated right up against the AMD RX five sixty. Um, maybe this is a good sign that there's you know a return of some competitive. I don't know. Any kind of competition It'll be interesting for this to point. Test nonetheless. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Especially if you can get it for 160. And uh, our final, final, no, not our final, second to final te- uh, <laughs> story the Intel Z390 chipset was accidentally leaked by Intel's own website. Seems to happen a lot. It does seem to happen more Lately. often than it should. Jeremy, is there anything that stands out about this? Francois leaves Intel. <laughs> and suddenly we get leaks. Hmm. Shocking, Shocking, isn't it? Hmm. I think not. Indeed. Uh, well, I mean, it's it's pretty quick to go through because it really hasn't changed all that much. Uh, one thing they've done is take advantage of the fact that Coffee Lake actually has a decent graphics card on it. So it'll do three HDMI or DP outputs with 10-bit color HDR support and up to 4K resolutions. No graphics card required, which is, you know, good if you're looking to start a, a build that you're going to build on to. And right. it comes with gigabit NICs, a pair of them up to max, which, I th- you know, is nice to see. Does this one add wireless? Yes. As well? So this is, yeah, it integrates wireless AC, 802.11ac, and Bluetooth 5 into the chipset, which yeah. I believe is new. Uh, we we saw desktop. that with the... Maybe, I don't know if it's both the H and B series chipsets for like the H and B three seventy. I think yeah. it's the H series chipsets had it, and the new notebook chipsets have it. Yes. So this is the first like Z series yeah. to have it added in. There. Correct. Um, did they did they mention anything about support for eight core processors in this? I don't think they did in this. We had seen Nothing other leaks off. about hey the Z three ninety is what's going to support you know eight core Cabby Lake. Eight whatever you want to call it, Cof- Coffee Lake. What the hell are we on now? Coffee, Coffee Lake. Lake. Coffee. Yeah. All right. All and right. You bring this up. The, let's let's put it down in stone. Let's place your bets. Say it out loud. Will the eight core Coffee Lake work on Z three seventy? I say yes. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm being optimistic. I say being very optimistic. I say probably not. Unfortunately. I'm gonna say here's I'm gonna hope. <laughs> oh sure, I'll hope too. <laughs> I'm gonna say yes that they will because I have maybe unrealistic faith that <laughs> Intel 
has been learning from the pushback from the community that you can't just do this every time. I don't think they learned quick enough, which is why I say no. I mean, well, yes, it might be that this chipset is done and the and the and the roadmap was in place before they started that learning and but, that the power it, delivery it, system it is matter. different. We've and whatever. seen C two seventy boards with hacked UEFIs yeah, running. That's true. 8700Ks if they have Your the proper question VRMs. Was, will it officially support yes. though? Not yes. will it hack? I say it yeah. will officially support it. Got it. Mm. Yeah. I, I'm going to say yes. I, I, I want to say yes because it's a decision they can make so late in the game by just releasing an EFI that works. That's true. As long as the, as long as the, the power, power delivery. delivery and all that stuff is, is set up correctly for but it. That's, how, how much more do you think the TDP for the eight part, I don't know, eighth core part is going to be over Hopefully the not part? much. Because you know it's going to be cool, 150 the cooler watts, which ecosystem is going to blow the VRM. No, I don't think it's going to work yes. on eight series motherboards. <laughs> no, no, but, it definitely won't. That no, but, I don't know. So, so an aside here. All right. So this is a new chipset. We're still on. It's a one gigabit NIC on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you want ten gigabit? You pay. You pay. Yeah, bigs. but that's the case everywhere. Still. So that so that is the case. It's a, it's a gig on board across the board, both Intel and AMD. Well, that's not going to stop motherboard makers from including, like, uh, you know, an X550 Intel NIC. Right, right. No, I was wondering because or something. I, I thought, yeah, like, Threadripper had the multiple The problem with tens. the Intel stuff is the amount of PCIe leans coming from the CPU and using of, uh, what, DMA? DMI. DMI mm. from, from yeah. the CPU to the chipset. And everything hanging off of that chipset and sharing that DMI. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of only grim. four lanes PCIe. Yeah. You're really yeah, right. You, you I bottleneck mean, uh, that with the 10 gig. Okay, how, how does M.2 typically route, Alan, on the Intel platform? Through a chipset. Yeah, it's usually through a chipset. Yeah, yeah. Which and is, then we're we're looking at 10G going through where? Well, what? Well, the I mean, it, it, if, it was, if it was built in to the platform, it would be through the chipset, is the thing. Like, that's, yeah, that's why I was saying. It's still DMI3, so yeah. you're limited. DMI. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, the, that's the one positive thing that AMD has going for them, yeah. especially with their Threadripper. And I, I would imagine their next generation Threadripper stuff, uh, a lot of those motherboards are going to be 10G directly to God, I hope so. the CPU. That, yeah. that would be amazing. And that's the way around it, right? You build the... You build the neck into the CPU. Uh, no, your, you don't even need to nick into the CPU. You just have dedicated and, PCI lanes because there's 32 of well, those sure, freaking sure. things. But then, but then you're yep. back. But then you're back to just you know now the or 64. I Wasn't can't there remember. something about w that came out with the Ryzen embedded stuff that there are actually so optional that's, that's 10 gig files? Yeah. That's what yeah. Alex was was talking about. Was that there was there's four 10 giggy? I think it was two or four. It's probably 10 four. Gig. It's four because four, uh, it's just four, four for yeah, the into it for the embedded yeah. side that are not enabled on the consumer side. Mm. Um, I think it's a trade off between PCIe lanes and using those five. I would agree with that sentiment. I believe that is the case. Yeah, that would make sense. Mm. But I'm not positive. Um, yeah, I, but I, either, I swore even, the Ethernet fives on the the Zen platform are dedicated outside the PCI. It might be it might be the case. It might be the case. Mm, yeah, but no no yeah. consumer board has integrated. As far as I know, the like the Epic platforms don't integrate it. Yeah, right. It's I only like the really embedded. I mean, you've got so many lanes we, on the we Epic We have an Epic platform, server in here so now that. from Supermicro, and it's got four. One what about that Azrock Tai Chi Plus, whatever, <laughs> well, that's 470 just, that's that's just, got the 10G? I'm, I'm imagining AMD doesn't allow them to access that. That's just on the using a, uh, yeah. a Quantia NIC yeah. on board. Yeah. But okay. you, you can integrate an external chip yeah. on any because, platform you want. Because they had a, Azrock had a X370 board, I believe, with a 10 gig NIC. That was the Quantia stuff. Yeah. And even if, even if it's on the die and they just have to turn it on, it's not going to be free. You're not going to get a 40 gig thing just like thrown in. You for mean free. like cost wise, they would charge extra. It'd for be it. like a license yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're yeah. AMD, if it's on there, I could see you know enabling one of those for yeah uh, consumer products as just another reason to get people to try to move away from Intel and sure. build more boards on it. But you still have to have uh, even if you've got the FI, it's the FI that's on there, right? I think so. Yeah, it's like well, physically the, like yeah. Well, the so the five is going to be the actual. Right? Yeah. The f okay. The five is the external part that has to exist on the board still. Yeah. Right. 
it's it's the oh you're saying but, the, but the what is the limiting factor is, yeah, of okay. all this not the motherboard what is the limiting factor mm, ends CPU. money no well it's money well in switches sure. yeah that's oh true. sure uh, mm. yeah 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 but i mean yes 10 gigi is still expensive for implementation yeah on the network side trust us we know but still I mean, it's never stopped a motherboard guy from putting a feature on there that nobody really needs or can use yet in order to put it on the box and sell more products. Well, we have RGB mindset. for that now. But yeah, well, <laughs> not for long. That'll, yeah, I mean, that'll when, be a you know, Sata Express up. was used extensively. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yes, Correct. Oh, yeah. yes, it was. And not, I would bet zero Sata Express devices were ever sold to people who listen to this podcast. Probably not. <laughs> I saw multiple Sata Express demos at CES. That was it. Have we were we ever sent a SATA Express device? No, but at one yes. point there was. Well, okay. I don't think we ever you got the dev board that was you floating around. You had one for testing. Was it an there external a, dock? It was a thing. Yeah, I think it was a dock or. It, a, it was a thing that connected to the SATA Express port, but gave you a PCI Express port to plug a card into, and a SATA hmm. port to plug. It's like here, you want to connect these two things through this one thing that's designed to connect two things through it. Here's the two separate ports for you to plug those two separate nice. things into and nice. <laughs> connect them to the system. Have fun. There was supposed to be like a Western Digital hard drive at one point with like a, you know, a SATA hard drive with like a PCI Express. I thought there was a right. NAS that was compatible with it, but I can't think let's of which do, one it was. Let's do our last story. Cryo rig. Let us. Cryo rig, frost bit. Finally, what we've all been waiting for, the M.2 cooler. No. For Does it rotate extreme... like a saw blade? Users. Oh, it better. It better nope. be an active cooler. What I hope is that f those fins rotate. No, nope. yep. <laughs> they spin. It's got to spin. <laughs> Spinning ball death. So, this is the stupidest thing I have ever seen. Cryo rig Frostbit M.2 cooler is the first <laughs> dual heat pipe cooler that uses a thin one millimeter heat pipe that spreads heat across a small heat spreader and a thicker heat pipe that draws heat away to a larger external heat sink. Yeah, so you're. So you're making sure that it's whole thing is heavier than the drive you've got. It's only well, weighs 56 grams. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, angle yeah, of the yeah. external circular heat sink and heat pipe can be manually adjusted so that it can fit in the systems with large CPU or GPU coolers. And CryoRig's website notes that the Frostbit features 38 fins and is rated at 38. 12 watts of cooling power. Well, M.2 SSDs. Right, that's the doubles as a fidget spinner. M.2 SSDs, which draw their power from 3.3 volts. <laughs> Are kind of not allowed to draw more than six watts, like without breaking the freaking motherboard. Okay, just saying. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's that. Um, second, uh, and more importantly, hey Jeremy, how many degrees C is it in your your room there? Uh, it's got to be twenty two or so. Okay, twenty two, huh? If you take an M.2 SSD and you very efficiently cool the whole thing, that would probably bring uh, SSD that only it's rated for 12 watts. SSDs only dissipate like five or five or six at the most when they're fully active, right? Uh, so this could probably bring the SSD pretty close to room temperature, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, what I I'm expecting is it's going to use rights. the uh, heat from my uh, GPU to start heating up. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. M.2. Uh, so it's actually going to be heat sink for some other part. So here's the thing so it's colder than 25C in your room there. So let's just round up a little to 25C. If you take a, a consumer SSD and you run it at 25 degrees Celsius, specifically the flash chips, you just cut the lifetime of that SSD in half. You get half the endurance from the flash if you run it at 25C. Because it's got to heat up, baby, to change those bits. No, because it's harder to tunnel electrons through an insulator when it's colder. And you wear the insulator faster, so you're wearing out the flash faster, twice okay, as fast. Which which <laughs> part of what I said was not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a different yeah, way yeah. of saying that. <sighs> but it doesn't heat it up. Is my so point. what you're saying is we need a deep freeze and an SSD endurance test. So like when Intel tests their flash memory and they want to wear it out quicker to see how long it lasts within a reasonable amount of time, mm -hmm. they cool it off. Yeah. <laughs> and they do the same rights to it, and then it wears out quicker. So, like I said, we need a deep freeze and an SSD endurance test. Oh, God. Well, I mean, now that you bring it up, Al, just looking at here, uh, most of my drives are running at about 30C right now. 
Uh, yeah, and your drives are not actively cooled. No, they're, they're just getting fans passed over it. That's the only cooling it's getting. Yeah, but not like with a big old heat sink and like heat pipes and crap on it, right? So if you run them at 25, you're just going to wear them out quicker. They're going to die faster. Don't do it. It's like the stupidest thing ever. Now, if you want to take this thing and make absolutely sure that you don't ever possibly thermal throttle mm -hmm. your SSD, uh, just make sure that whatever the thermal pad is for that thing is only touching the controller. Do not let it sit. Which it could be. We just don't know. Right. But, I mean, my argument it's there... It's probably not. My argument there is you shouldn't even be doing that because you want the flash to run warmer while you're using the SSD. The controller only really heats up while you're using the SSD. And pretty much all modern SSDs come with a, like, the label itself, if you look at it from the edge, there's a copper layer in there. Mm -hmm. So there's a, it's a built-in heat spreader designed to transfer the heat from the controller over to the rest of the area, including, basically, it's usually the flash, right? So if anything, the SSD just automatically makes itself have better endurance because whenever it is active, it warms up the flash. The flash has an easier job of writing. Mm. And then when it's idle, the flash cools off, which actually helps it uh, retain its bits for longer. You get less leakage at lower temperatures. Right? Josh also gets less leakage gets at, less lower leakage temperatures. at lower temperatures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just... Uh, I've got a lot of insulation, so, yeah. Yeah. If the, you're really cold, retaining your fluids actually keeps you warmer longer, just like flash. Yeah. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, it's the same idea. Basically... Until you drop that big, solid brick. Basically, any normal... It, it, like... Even as it is right now, in order for me to get any given SSD to thermally throttle, I have to do continuous, like, synthetic workload to it. Nothing that I, like, I've never had any of the SSDs, uh, like, just in normal use, get to the point where they're thermal throttling. And that's even my use, which is kind of heavy usage. Just right. like, doing normal stuff. Right, just like downloading a Steam game to it, putting content on it, just running stuff off of it. So it when never NASA gets that runs hot. this stuff, they need to put it next to the thermal generator, right? <sighs> or just get direct sunlight on it. When Apollo 14 finally gets up there. <laughs> now 18. We stopped at 17? I yeah. knew it wasn't 13. I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway. So you don't want to buy this? Is that what you're telling me? No. No, I'm gonna buy one for every drive. You're gonna buy one for every drive. Okay. Every drive we have. Can, can uh, I glue when it you to come a hard back? Drive? Every, we'll every M.2 drive is gonna have one of these installed on it. Uh, all right, let's get to our picks of the week. And I'm really disappointed because I, I wanted to talk about this longer than we have. Um, so last week, or over the weekend, I guess essentially, I went to Disney World with my wife and daughter and wife's family. And uh, about I, the mistress. The mistress come along? No, I left her at home this time. It makes things okay. complicated. With the mother-in-law there, you know, you don't want to have that discussion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I finally ran through the <laughs> Void, which is uh, the company that creates these VR experiences. They have one called Star Wars: Secrets of the Empire that I didn't realize had actually been in production since, or had been in use use since 2016. That had been available to use since like I think November of 2016 or something like well, that. I think this is like a new campaign for the Star Wars stuff. Yes. I think the Star Wars one was in 2016. No, Star I think this is a new Star Wars campaign compared to the previous one. Maybe. I think they updated it recently. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true, but whatever. Regardless. <laughs> Who cares? Some people get tired of playing so the, the same level so over and over again. So the idea here around. is, if you don't know what this is, it is um, you, you put on a VR headset, but it's a whole helmet with headphones, microphone, all that. Uh, you have a, um, a backpack on... Mm -hmm. That is essentially a gaming PC, gaming laptop. Uh, I think it's the last thing we saw was a GTX 980. Yeah. Maybe you've upgraded since then, but it was a GTX 980 based machine. And you wear this outfit essentially. If you're watching the video version, you can see you what it is. Super cool. And it, you, you, there's you, no gloves and there's no, uh, yeah, so it's a, it does hand tracking from, um, Leap Motion. Magic Leap. Leap yep. motion. Leap motion. Yes, leap I was motion. Go mixed up. Matt, leap motion. Um, hand finger tracking. And and this is not like a VR experience with Vive and Rift where you set up in a 10 by 10 or a 15 by 15 room and everything happens in that space. They have it set up where you're in a big 
environment where you physically walk through the space. They have set up rooms that are just gray painted walls mm -hmm. um, with doorways and handles and droids and, you know, uh, bars to hold on to and stuff. And you walk through the space. But when you're looking at it through your VR headset, it is... It is an alternate. It is AR. It was. It is. And they have the walls. Augmented. They have the walls in the right place. Yeah, the walls in the right place. If there's a wall that I see in the virtual space, I reach out and I'm touching a wall. Yeah. Um, I hate you. You're in there with four, three other people. You know, you, you're all you know posing as stormtroopers, which obviously makes sense because that gives you an excuse to have a backpack on and a helmet. And so my brother-in-law was there, and you see him as a stormtrooper. You reach out, you touch his shoulder. His shoulder is there, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. it's not plastic like a like a stormtrooper costume would be, but whatever. It, it's it's pretty cool. And there was there was some there's just some really cool stuff that happens in it. Like you get put in this room. They start the narrator starts talking to you about the story. A door opens, and you have to walk through it. And it's having done a lot of VR. It's a very unnerving thing to have <laughs> trust and faith. That I'm not going to just gonna smack walk into, the wall. into a wall, right? <laughs> so you move very slowly. I had my hand kind of out in front of me, you know, and you walk through this door. Like how, what would you say like the square footage like of the thing was? Um, like was it like a I house? I don't know because you, as, the, as a person, even once you were done, you took the headset off and I was trying to peek around at things. Uh, I think there are multiple, they can run multiple concurrent. So it was probably mirrored on two, maybe three sure. sides. I don't know. Like what was the size of your thing? You were probably in <sighs> 10 rooms that were. Oh, crap. <laughs> eight by eight, 10 by yeah, 10. But, yeah, but 10 rooms. It's yeah. like, you know, we're used to VR now, what like I'm not, one room. What I'm not positive of that you could reuse the room. Oh, sure. You could come in and again yep. from a different angle and it'd be mapped as a completely oh, different space. Oh, yeah. Right? Just oh, depending crap. on how they negotiate the maze or whatever. Yeah. And and it's still uh, very much a story-driven thing. It's linear. There's not like, I ask them if I come out, if I do it again, can I get a different ending? Can you go a different way? No, right. none of that really exists yet. It's all the same yet. thing. Okay. But the, one of the moments that stood out to me was one of the very first things you do. They, they kind of, in a 20-minute in thing, they have to kind of walk you through like, door opens you can walk through the space it's real mm -hmm. no, now and then you to, go into a medical routine and you yeah. do lamaze with a you, woman in, in you in have pregnant? to show that you can interact with the device or with the real world right so there's a handle to uh, uh, activate the the elevator mm -hmm. and i was doing the thing that you do in vr with the vive where you reach out until your hand avatar kind of looks like it's near it and you kind of just like grip right like you're <laughs> you were trying to do, i understand like, that in vr i'm not really touching a thing right so I grabbed it, but it wasn't working. And I realized I went a little bit further. There was the handle. And you actually fling it down. It clunks, boom, the elevator moves, right? Huh. Um, That's pretty cool. There's a place where there's a, a like a safety bar in front of you that you can grab and lean onto and lean over and look down and, and all that. It was really cool. There's a place where part of the walkway is, is melting lava and you have to rush across it faster. When you walk across it, they make it so that it feels squishy on that part of the ground, <laughs> right? As opposed to solid. Yeah. Um, when you, you don't start with a gun, when you pick up a gun, it's in a gun rack and, and you pick up an actual gun and you reach and there's an actual, you know, gun type device <laughs> that you are picking <laughs> up and you're awesome. holding like it. And when you look wow. at it in the VR space, <laughs> it looks like a stormtrooper rifle and it, it was it was thirty five dollars for you know twenty twenty five minutes of, of experience. Probably worth every penny. It was worth every dollar of it. Uh, if you are in, I think they exist at Disney World, Disneyland, and uh, one other place for the Star Wars one. And then they have a Ghostbusters version of this, which is very similar. You know, techno it's all the same technology. It's in like Dubai and New York and Toronto and maybe Seattle or Portland or something like that too. It's called the Void. Um, it was it was really cool, and it was e it's easy to see after doing that how VR and AR will change how that type of entertainment stuff happens mm -hmm. at parks or whatever. Um, you know, the next step is to make it a a hundred by hundred room that's open air, and there's twenty people walking around instead of four, and mm -hmm. you know you interact in different ways. You have virtual laser tag and these types of things. Uh, it, it was it was really neat. To have work and and um, so when are we building one? <laughs> man, I tell you what, I tried to ask them a lot about the technologies behind it, and nobody wanted to say anything. There was it's it, there's an Oculus logo in some of the stuff. Yeah. So you know, it's powered by Oculus. You know, it's Oculus. There's been, there's been other like promo videos for like their stuff, and you know, it's Oculus. You know, it's leaked. But it's 
it, it's it's very unique in that again having used the rift having used the uh the vive using the oculus go yeah. all these other ones that They're are blowing room scale out of the water oh it's, i mean it's a totally different yeah it's a totally different type thing so uh, highly encourage you to check it out. I'll I'll do some more writing on it uh, on a, at a future time. So, I want to take you to shoot a teammate. Uh, so actually, that's one of the first things you have to do when you pick up the gun. Like <laughs> it doesn't when you pick up the gun, the story doesn't progress until you somebody accidentally hits the trigger and like sets off an alarm, and that's when oh. like the action starts in the thing. And so. You know, me and my, my brother-in-law and one of uh, my wife's cousins were kind of like looking around at stuff like, this is really cool. And m- my brother-in-law hits the trigger and, and like, you know, the wall lights up on fire and then the alarm goes off and then, oh, you've got to get out of here. The door opens and, you know, something, something, something. I imagine something else would happen if you just literally sit there and do nothing. I mean, he's a stormtrooper, so of course he missed. Yes. They did do a very funny like intro about like the ground rules of, you know, don't run in the space. He's, they were like, just like a real stormtrooper, you don't run, you don't jump, you don't crouch, <laughs> uh, things like that. Don't so, hit people with a gun. You don't actually yeah. aim well, things like that. So <laughs> you don't actually aim well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, go ahead. I talked for too long on that. Jeremy, what's your pick? Uh, pretty much the exact opposite, more or less in a way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is for people who can't run around while they're playing games. Uh, it, it's the, Xbox adaptive controller. Now, at first glance, it looks like a giant controller about the size of an Xbox with two giant buttons and a D-pad on it. And who really cares? Yeah. On the back of this thing is 19 three and a half mil jacks, which are designed to accept anything, any sort of input. So you, you you've seen mobility aids where essentially you're just you're blowing in a tube to be able to drive your wheelchair. Yeah. Plug it into this. You can wow. game now. That's a lot of I, jacks. It, like there they are right yeah, there. Yeah. Holy crap. <clears throat> so the idea is it doesn't matter what kind of interface you need. It'll work. Sweet. Uh, it's yeah. It's not quite out yet. Uh, it's pretty much done. And I mean, it looks a little prototypey, but chances are it's going to look a lot like this. The video they put out for this is awesome. Like yeah, if, you, if you watch the promo video for this about how they built it and then the uh, the people they able they are able to enable yeah. for for normal gaming and being able to play every game and all that type of stuff is super awesome, uh, and it's it's worth watching if you have even if you have no disabilities and you have nothing of the sort it's worth watching to see how other people have to deal with this stuff mm-hmm. and. To see a company like Microsoft, like they're not going to make money on this, right? This is not a profitable no. venture for them. No. This is something, it's an enablement, well, it's a research. Boy, is thing. it a quality of life improvement for a lot of people? Oh, yeah. yeah. For not well, a except they got to play price. Xbox games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the Actually, only it'll work on PC. Yeah, it should work on PC. Yeah, it will. Which means all of a sudden people are going to really be playing Dead Souls again and bragging about how they beat it with a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Really yeah, interesting. Yeah, this is an awesome project. Check it yeah. out. Uh, who's next? The HP SSD. That's pretty cheap. Come on. 512 gigs for what? How much? 115. 115. 115. That's not that's, 51. That's pretty good. cents a gig. That's pretty nice. And that's not even a sale price, man. You're right. Yeah. Oh, HP, I love you. Well, in ways, but, you know, <laughs> it's a solid SSD and cheap, 512 gigs. It's just, you know. They're getting the job done. Storage. Storage makes me happy. Three-year limited warranty. Hmm. They have uh, M.2 version. M.2 SATA. Yeah, but, but that's, M.2 a, that's M.2 SATA. Yeah, they're all, all those S700s or yeah. SATA one way or the other. Yeah. Is the S seven hundred less than the Pro? Yeah, you can get a five hundred gig for ninety nine bucks. Yep. Wow. Nineteen point eight cents per gig. Getting there. That's a ten cent class. We are ten cent class. There. Don't forget, there is that Micron. Uh, what was it? The we were one. What was it's Micron eleven hundred? Yeah, but it's only really in a two terabyte, and it's a three hundred dollar drive, which is good cost per gig. But you still have to spend three hundred bucks on a drive. Yeah. Right. Yep. Two terabytes, three thirteen. No, been it's, it's been cheaper than that. It's been like two seventy five recently, yep. like that around there. Mm. But that's only if you're you know have more budget, obviously, right? But you're getting a crap load of storage. 
for that. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. The two terabytes are now. That's 1375, yeah. 13 cents a gig. Yeah. It's like, whoa. <laughs> like, that, that was, that was a year ago. Affordable. That was one terabyte. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Alan. Yep. So there's uh, like 12 hours left on this um, on this Kickstarter for the missed 25th anniversary collection. They only got I don't think they're going to make it. Yeah, they only they got, got 2.6 million. 2.6 million out of their uh, requested 247,500, which is a very specific number. But uh, sure. Yeah. I don't know why you would just round up the other $2,500, <laughs> but okay. Uh, they've been adding a whole bunch of stuff because, like, I mean, these, these are like generally nice developers so like they've been adding stuff to like all of the tiers like not just to like the higher tiers that's people have just been pouring money into this thing four million dollars yeah, yeah they, they basically were just like <laughs> ah we were just gonna do the soundtrack at a higher tier but uh forget it they're just like even if you do a dollar you get like the soundtrack or whatever they for added this thing. five 3d printable items for mist Ooh, 3d printable items i didn't yeah like i didn't the, know they did the, that like they're not gonna send you the physical good but no but they'll send you the yeah they the will. file can you are you in Oh, yeah. All right. Because I'm probably going to get the files. As long as my printer is somehow magically working at that point. Because I'm in. printers are even worse than regular I'm printers. I'm in for the, I think I'm in for the writer. Yeah. Have, have you edition. sent this to Hewlett yet? Because this is right up his alley. Oh, Comes with a book. I forgot. What version book, book. The book. And, and the, book the is, printing. Um, the book. The well, printing. Do you want the book or the book with the animated? I want the book with the digital screen. Okay. That's the maintainer. How much does that cost me? Uh, one seventy. Must not be a very good screen. <laughs> not the point. The, bu- the bookmaker, <laughs> the bookmaker is a hundred bucks, but it, you get you still get the book, but it just doesn't have the screen built in. Yeah, here but we it's go. Why two forty seven five hundred? Let's see. That's twenty five hundred orders of ninety nine dollar tier. Okay, so all right. Well, Josh, email that to uh, not a hundred dollar tier. Email that yeah, to yeah. He's he's in Boston at a robotics thing. He, he, man, you don't man, think man, you don't man. think he would stop what he's doing for thirty seconds? You're not stalking him, are you? Kick into a Kickstarter. Well, he's on Twitter, so I have no idea. No, oh, okay. Fair. Ooh, a G thousand dollars. What do I get for a thousand dollars? More downloads and a scarab. Didn't they have a tier that was like art from the game, like an art cell? Art, 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 yeah, that art. was the. That's that all gone. One? Oh, yeah. that was like a thousand bucks. Yeah, but that's. I still think that was pretty good for yeah, something was, like it that. It was so many pieces of original concept art, yeah. like the actual. Oh, really? Concept art from like Riven, I think. Um, but they only had so much of the concept well, art, yeah. right? So yeah, apparently they had twenty five of them. Yeah. And I wasn't going to do the writer one because I was like, I don't really need like an actual trinket because it's like a fountain pen that was what, like in the what game. What would you put on the back of your wall without more trinkets? Well, no, it's not that. It's like, <laughs> but, but they ended up, but they ended up adding other stuff to it, and it kind of like tempted me. And I was like, okay, fine. All right, so that's it. That's it. Missed twenty fifth anniversary collection. Yep. I mean, I already pretty much own all those games already, but. <laughs> Well, they're all going to be updated yeah, to run. Are. They're all going to be updated to run like on. No, this you know, is everybody's life now. We buy everything. I'm still well, 500. Yeah. Alan's still talking about Mist. <laughs> 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 I feel like every 75 episodes or so, Alan Listen, brings up Mist. It's a special place like in my 25. heart because, like, twice a year, that seems pretty common. Like, that seems the fir- right. like, I had I had joined the military and like didn't do anything with PCs at all for like two years because I had to go through all this crazy training and like you just don't have time to mess around with PCs. Yeah, right? and like when I finally got to the tail end of all that and my roommate bought a pc mist was like the game that's like when yeah. that came out right mm-hmm. and so like that's what i jumped back into when i sort of like got back and like started playing some games on pc right and it was at the time just phenomenal right like mist was, yeah, no, mist was the shit back then it was interesting it was just insanity that you were getting that out of a uh, computer at the time right mm-hmm. it was just unheard of Turns out pre-rendered. It's pre-rendered. Yeah, so, well, yeah. yeah. But yeah. at the time, we didn't even understand what that meant. Imagine how long it took to right. render. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's true. There was the an article about that. It took, them, it sure. took them a long time. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. That is it for uh, the entirety of PC Perspective Podcast. Forgot to mention at the beginning of the show that we were killing it after 500 episodes. I think I said oh, that thank God. in like episode six or seven, Jeremy. We'll have to go back and, and listen to where I said. But I think I said, if we yes. ever make it to 500, we're killing it. This is the sunset episode. 
We can finally have our uh, Wednesday nights I back. Need my Wednesdays or, uh, back. It's not actually true. We'll, no. we'll have another episode next week. Yeah, because I, I need more excuses to drink beer. Yeah, you definitely do. Yeah, for sure. All right, everybody, that's going to uh, be have it. Have you looked at my face? We're trying not Unfortunately, to. Unfortunately. <laughs> thank you. I mean, I <laughs> saw it in person even recently, which was... <sighs> <sighs> Oof. Horrific. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hot, sweaty, and full the of barbecue. I had, to go to, I had to go to the magic place, magic, most magical place on earth in order to get, get past it. So, <laughs> <laughs> But right. we did hit a really hipster bar. Oh, in Austin? Uh, no. Any bar you have to go to where you have to slide a fake oh, library wall to yeah. the side. I'm just like, whatever. Just serve me the drink. Mm. We, don't, we don't have to be uppity about this. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We will uh, we'll be back next week for another episode. It's time to start on the next 500. Good night.